let, let me say this. On Mondays, it's probably Bleach and Bell. Other days, probably your show. <laughs> so on Mondays, you like Bleach and Bell because Bell's not here. Well, no, I just love Terry Foster. Sports Network, let's go! Get them beds, fishy. Welcome to the Morning Woodward Show right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Stick. If you heard a little hot mic action before, uh, Fish had the mics on and we were talking about his favorite shows here <laughs> at the Woodward Sports Network. And unfortunately, the morning show is not his favorite show. I love the honesty, though. He <laughs> right. said it straight to our face, but, but not like everyone else that would say it behind our back. Right. He said he uh, he loved Bell and Belizean's show, especially on Mondays when Terry Foster is in because he loves loves Terry Foster. So, uh, yeah, that was our little conversation that you heard, and we were giving Fish a little bit of a rough time, but we love Fish around here. Uh, welcome to the Morning Woodward Show. My name is Stick. To my right. I'm a hurt man by those comments, Fish. Oh, and no, to my fish. left. <laughs> it is Joey. Hello there. And then we have uh, Alex in producer booth. We have Fish in the sound booth. Um, Adam is here today, feeling a little bit under the weather, so we're going to take it easy on him. But let's get right on into it. I mean, the biggest news to pop off last night and probably the biggest news for today is uh, franchise tag day in the NFL. So that means um, teams have till 4 o'clock to place their franchise tags before free agency opens up and the league's ready to rock. Kenny Galladay is probably the biggest one for the Lions to resign, either him or Okora. But we got to also talk about what Dallas did with Dak Prescott. I mean, yesterday, Dak Prescott signed pretty much the biggest deal a quarterback has ever signed. If you want to go by pure numbers, Patrick Mahomes still holds that. But if you want to go by a one year number, dude got $75 million guaranteed for one year, Corey. Man, he got that Brinks truck backed up. And then also, too, just the deals, the um, the little incentives. I'm saying not incentives, intangibles that went into the deal. Like, there is going to be a no-trade clause and a no-future tag in there as well. So, man, shout-out to Dak. I did not think that he was going to get that type of deal with the Dallas Cowboys. But, hey, more power to him. Got that check. Congrats. <laughs> Yeah. And it just shows, you know, how he was waiting it out, and all of a sudden he finally got what he wanted. But, damn, I did not expect him to get that much. What this tells me is those doctors are pretty sure that that dude's snapped ankle is better, right? I mean, you would invest $160 million is the totality of the contract for a guy with a still busted ankle. Oh, hell no. They, 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 they definitely did their due diligence and you know, cross-reference every type of x-ray or every type of test they can do on that to give him that type of deal when there are other quarterbacks that have, you know, quote-unquote made their list about wanting to go to Dallas, Russell Wilson, and <laughs> he gets that? Yeah, they, they're, they're they're pretty certain. And good for good for Dallas. Now they can go ahead and put this behind them and continue to um, be the underwhelming Cowboys they are. Yeah, Dak Prescott owes um, the Red Rocket 
a lot. That's <laughs> that's really what happens. I mean, he came in last year. He was going to be the backup and take take the Cowboys to the next level. If Dak got hurt, Dak got hurt, and the Cowboys went to absolute crap. So, Andy Dalton, you should get at least a little bit of this cash that Dak Prescott got. Um, but, yeah, let's break down the contract. I mean, uh, four years, $160 million, 126 of that is guaranteed, $75 million in year one. That signing bonus is no joke. Dude. Oh, you do see the you see the picture of him and his brother crying? I would have cried too. Oh Hell man, yeah. cried. What? could you imagine signing that contract, especially after the year that you just had? I mean, he played what in six games, and they didn't even do well in those six games. But Dak did okay. I mean, he put up some great fantasy numbers. I know he was my fantasy quarterback till um, you know about week seven, and that kind of ruined everything. But for him to get this size of a contract, I. I'm happy because I don't like Dallas, and I think they've invested a lot of money into a quarterback that's not great. I'm, I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> I th- is it just because there was nothing better that they could have done that they feel like? I honestly don't know. I feel like he, I feel like, like I said, Andy Dalton showed them what life would be like without Dak, and I think. Sometimes, you know, and I've said this on the show multiple times, sometimes your absence has to speak louder than your presence. And that's what happened with Dak Prescott. His absence showed them, oh, my God, if we don't even secure Dak Prescott, what are we going to be doing for the next couple years? That that unknown looked really, really scary, you know, on the other side of deciding to try to, like, go with somebody like a Dalton. So, you know, one one thing I do is you got to give a real big kudos to Dak Prescott for betting on himself. He turned down the previous deals and then he held out for the one that he wanted even with the ankle injury he just trusted he trusted himself he trusted what was what was out there and when i guess his agent knew something that the cowboys didn't know about moves they could make and secured his future for you know at least the next four years just 75 in the first year in the first year man just I'm, guarantee I'm, what would you do if you what would you do if you just got 75 million your first year I'd retire. <laughs> like, I, I'd play one year then I'd go Ricky Williams and just travel the world see but like when you mention how big this deal is 160 million dollars like this this deal is unbelievable because you see the guaranteed, especially that amount. I mean, that's the highest in history. Yeah. But you think of Dak Prescott, and then you ask yourself, like, is this really worth it? Because, I mean, what I would have done, like, was there opportunities for them to at least, like, trade up and get a quarterback in the draft or something that's more budget-friendly on this deal? Because <laughs> it ain't guaranteed success with him. Obviously, he's a great player, but it ain't guaranteed his success, especially his health issues. One thing that I believe we've seen with Jerry Jones is that if he has his guy or if he has a guy that he likes, he's not shy about paying him. He may not pay him initially. You know, he's a businessman. He's going to try to go ahead and, you know, get the best dollar for his value. But if it comes down to if he has to pay a guy, Jerry Jones will write that check. And that's what I was hoping that he fell in love with Matthew Stafford. <laughs> like, honestly, because we saw what happens when he fell in love with Roy Williams. We were able to fleece the Cowboys. Granted, we didn't turn those picks into greatness, but at the same time, I mean, we got two first-round picks for Roy frickin' Williams from the Cowboys just because he played at Texas. Jerry Jones, pew, 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 that's my guy. I want him to play for me. <laughs> you know, we. I wonder, did they? the Lions even – have any kind of conversations with the Cowboys because they really could have robbed the Cowboys blind for anything that they wanted. Like, hey, we want this, we want this, we want this, give me two of those. But, hey, that got his deal. I'm curious to see how that's going to play out moving forward. They're going to give him more weapons. I know they have Amari Cooper over there. They got um, Ezekiel Elliott. But they, they need a little bit more to get over that hump. But, honestly, the real big thing with Dallas is I'm wondering about their coaching situation. Because, yeah, McCarthy is, yeah, he's, just, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, this is what they're getting out of Dak Prescott. This is what you're paying $75 million a year for. He is a tremendous athlete, and this is what, you know, when we talk about the Lions drafting a quarterback this year, dude played at Mississippi State. And I know, Joey, you hate how everybody always judges, oh, they've never turned out a good quarterback at Ohio State. Like, dude's from Mississippi State out here balling. Yeah. And since he got Amari Cooper, 
he's become uh, an official top ten quarterback in almost every statistical category. Almost top five. Look at that throw. You, you know, Jesus. you know, you know. Another reason why I believe Jerry paid him is not that Dak is one of the Dak is not a top five quarterback, but Dak is a top five competitor. When Dak is on the field, he competes. Yeah. Whether he's good in that game or not, you you at least get get the sense from him that he's doing everything that he can to win that game. Yeah, I mean, he's you look at him and he is kind of the prototypical quarterback. He's big, he's mobile, he's got the arm. I just don't feel he's in that Patrick Mahomes realm or no, just no, you no. know, he's not in that elite status to get 75 million for one year. No. It's better be the best year of his life. <laughs> but you're right. You know what? You right, he's not in there, but I will say this. If you can negotiate it and get it, yeah, no, yeah. I, believe me, I never am mad at anybody for getting yeah. the bag unless it's, you know, Chase Daniel and the Lions. Like, that's the <laughs> only player I'm mad at getting paid, but I got to respect when you can get paid like that. So, for doing nothing. Yeah, so Dak Prescott, going to be a Cowboy for at least the next four years. Uh, there is a no-trade con uh, con uh, contract in there, and he also uh, cannot be franchised after this contract is up, which I that's, thought... That's real key right there. I, I don't think I've... I don't think I've seen that one. I, I could. I, I mean, it may, it may have been out there, but I personally have not seen it. So I'm curious to see if, you know, we've seen the no trade clause with the um, with, with Deshaun Watson. So I'm wondering, is that no tag clause going to be something else moving forward that players are going to try to negotiate? Yeah, it's it's now it's now out there in the universe. Yeah, you know? like so it, it's going to be part, box is open. <laughs> yep, it's going to be part of every negotiation from here on out. Like, listen, I don't want to be franchised anymore, and it'll get to a point where they got to go back to the collective bargaining agreement, mm, redo all out. of it, and be like, all right, franchise tags are done. It was a good idea. It's just teams turned into abusing it. Teams really did abuse. Like it, it, it really got to the point where it was just like, heck, we're 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 talking. We're going to talk about that today. Like, who's going to get franchise tag? Who's not? It's really become an unfair tool. But whatever, we'll see what's going to happen when they go back to the table and start negotiating and whatnot. But yeah, yeah, hell of a deal for yeah, Dak Prescott. Yeah. Hell of a deal. So I know they're saying that 4 p.m. today is when they're going to be making this announcement by it. But what about the salary cap deadline? Because they haven't announced that yet? So they haven't announced the salary cap yet. Um, I did, you know, been looking all over for it. Their reports are that if they do not announce the salary cap, that the franchise tag deadline could be pushed back. So as of right now, the the deadline to franchise tag somebody is 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that could change. It's, it's, it's fluid at the moment. Because we, we got some big news, obviously, in Detroit that we're waiting on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Kenny Galladay. That is pretty much the guy that we're going to figure out if he's going to be franchise tagged or not. Apparently yesterday we found out that he turned down a deal anywhere between 18 and 19 million a year, which is pretty much what he would get on the franchise tag. So, you know, if they do franchise him, he's not going to be happy with that. And what we've seen last year, I mean, we joked about it that Kenny Galladay probably could have played in some more games, but we're also hearing some information about how Kenny Galladay has I don't want to use the term diva, but he's turned into a diva. Like, started. No, you can use diva. Okay. Okay. There we go. Diva. He's turned into a wide, an elite wide receiver. I guess that's the way to put it. It's a, Which the equates. same thing as saying diva. <laughs> exactly. Um, when he first came out, you know, his humble kid trying to make his way into the NFL, uh, he showed out. He had a couple good years. And now, I guess, like, when he walks in the room, he is he's the dude from Jerry Maguire. Like he's the show oh, me the money, Rod Tidwell dancing in the end zone. Like, like he's turned into that from my understanding. I don't know Kenny Galladay personally. I'm just saying what I hear from the people that I know that know him is that when he came into the league, humble, hard worker, all that. When he started to get a little shine, now it's dude banging models, whipping Bentleys. Like that's that's what he's turned into, and unfortunately that divanish kind of showed last year when it was like I'm gonna put myself above the team. I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna read some numbers off. So the reports are that Adam Schefter yesterday reported that Kenny Galladay turned down last year. He turned down a long-term extension of between 18 to 19 million per year. Let me give you some numbers. DeAndre Hopkins is making, is averaging 27.2 million per year. Julio Jones, 22 million a year. Keenan Island, 
20, point, 20, 20 million a year. Um, same thing with Amari Cooper and Michael Thomas, 19.25. Wow. As gr- good as Kenny Galladay is, those guys are great. I don't have Kenny Galladay in that class to make that kind of money. So for him to be, get to be offered a deal, I'm stuttering because it's, it's so mind boggling <laughs> to be offered that type of deal and to turn it down when really you didn't even you only, you only played five games last season. So basically, he will be getting that deal off of his 2018 and his 2019 seasons. Right to turn that down, man, you. I, I don't I don't think it's wise, but um, other reports are out there. The Baltimore Ravens, they're thinking about throwing the kitchen sink at him as well as the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know how the Ravens would work because, you know, Lamar Jackson, he's has he's not really a, a, a thrower. I mean, last season he threw about t- over a little, little bit over 2,700 yards pass and the year before 3,100. So, you know, what, what, it, he'll, he'll, be in a, he'll be a tool, but – I don't, I, don't, I don't think that – I think he made a mistake here, but we'll see. But I, I don't think the Lions – firstly, I don't think the Lions should, should franchise tag him at all. Yeah, when I'm looking at his stats here, you got 2018, uh, 1,063 yards, 15.2 uh, yards per catch. His long was a 60-yarder, 70 receptions for five touchdowns. Five touchdowns, not really sexy. Uh, 2019, 65 receptions, 1,190 yards, 11 touchdowns, which is a solid year. I mean, yeah. but I don't think that's elite, elite, elite solid year. Like, you got to prove that to me over the course of two, three, four years. Yeah. Not just have one great year and expect. Show me the money! See, that's the thing, though. I mean, you look, because he's been in the league for four years now. That second and third season, he was trajectory, like, getting better every single season. That fourth season last year right. was where I feel like really hurt him. Yeah, tw- especially tw- 20 receptions, 338 yards, and two TDs. Especially when you realize the, the, the fact that that's when he had this offer in front of him and he rejected it. So that's what's crazy to me because, yes, I classify him as a great receiver, but when you compare the amount of money that he turned down to the amount of money that some of the best receivers that Corey was just mentioning, it does not add up. And it's just scary because if we don't franchise tag him, what's our receiving core going to look like? Then are we going to have to draft somebody with that seven? That's pick? where the Jamar Chase comes in at number seven or a Jalen like Waddle or a Devontae Smith. That's If we don't franchise him, we almost have to take a wide receiver this year, right? I mean, that's, I mean that's, yeah, you, you, you have to because right now the only re- receivers the Lions have is Quintez Cephas and uh, Tyrell Williams, who they just signed in. Will, and neither of those guys are honestly, just to be real, neither of those guys are a number one receiver. Right. And, uh, and Williams has, also, Williams does have an injury history. So even though he was a low risk, he's a low risk, high reward signing, you still need another guy to be that number one. So it's either they eventually franchise tag him by 4 p.m., they somehow agree to some type of long term deal, or you're looking at free agency for your number one. Yeah, Steve Brown in the Facebook chat's asking, uh, would would there be a compensatory pick if we lost Galladay? And yes, there would be. Um, they would have to see who's on the roster, who's not on the roster. But I think the highest compensatory pick that they could get if we lost Kenny Galladay this year is a third rounder. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, third rounder. Yeah, third round is the highest we could get for him, which isn't exactly what you want to get for a Kenny Galladay. But you know what? It's better than nothing if you let the guy walk because, as we saw last year, an unhappy Kenny Galladay isn't really going to play for your football team. So I'm in the camp of not franchising this guy. Like, I want to go back to the Joe Dumars way of dealing with people, the no-knucklehead. Remember when Joe Dumars used to say that about everybody he'd bring into the Pistons? Like, listen, we want no knuckleheads in here. No knuckleheads. And it seems to be after last year's little skit and this year, you know, holding out on $18.19 million, yeah, a little bit of a knucklehead. Especially, like, you can't say that he necessarily deserves that. He's been playing good, but you can't say that he deserves that much money yet. Right. I mean, I'm just looking at, okay, look. We we already named the players and their dollar amounts, but I'm going to go back to Michael Thomas because of those players I named, his contract is closer to what Kenny Galladay was looking for. Now, you know, he didn't really have the the, the bill of health that you would want last season. Michael Thomas, you know, he played in seven games, got 438 yards, but his seasons before that, oh, record setting. I mean, let's look at 2019. 
149 receptions, 17-25. The year before that, 14 on five. The year before that, 12-45. The year before that, 11-37. And in each of those years outside of 2017, he has nine touchdowns. I mean, he. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's, he's earned. Got he's, almost, earned yeah. he's earned that nineteen point two five. You're you're. That's off of four, four seasons. You're talking about paying Kenny Galladay that off of two. So, devil's advocate here, just to have the conversation. If Kenny Galladay had Drew Brees and was in that offense, do you think he's putting up Mike Thomas numbers? Oh yeah, most definitely. So, um, kind of. It's weird because if he was that, he'd be worth the money. But since he was here in Detroit and really didn't do that, he's not worth the money. But we know if he was in a good system, that he could be that dude. Oh, I believe that he could. Like, if he played last year, he could have got those numbers. But the thing is, he didn't play last right, year. Right. So we're hedging our bets on somebody who is not healthy. I mean, look what the Cowboys just hedged their bets on, though. <laughs> but the thing is, Dak has that history of being good, elite. doing good to elite, playing, you know, taking a team to the playoffs. Kenny Galladay, I mean, not so much. You, you've, you've done well. You've done well here. Can't, can't complain. You know, can't down talk that. He had two good seasons. But that's the thing. Paying him off of two good seasons, I don't know. Yeah, so – on this table, what are you thinking? Do you want to franchise him before 4 o'clock? No. Joey? <sighs> yes. Yes? I do. I just I don't want to use a seven pick for a, dra- uh, for a quarterback. I uh, mean, for a wide, wide receiver. receiver. And I think we need to do this to at least give Goff a fair opportunity at succeeding. So we got to set him up with a little bit of support on this offense. So you, you would rather just get the franchise, have them for one year, use them for this year. And I, I actually, I don't mind that strategy. I don't want this guy on the team necessarily if he's the diva like that. But I do like what you're saying with Goff. Like, you want to give Goff every opportunity to show what he has this year so we know what we have in him going forward. So even if we do get one more year out of Galladay, knowing that we're not going to sign him long-term next year, but we got to surround Goff with some weapons to at least – evaluate him properly because if we sent golf out there with shit yeah. and he gives us shit it's like well okay we didn't really give him we didn't put him in the best position to so win. let's give him another year to try this and then True. it's just gonna drag right. and i don't want that it you know i'm gonna play devil's advocate on that I, here's my thing if kenny galladay does not want to be here don't use that franchise tag on him the, the, the last thing that with the team rebuilding and they're trying to get the right energy the in the locker room, trying right. to change that culture. You do not want a guy that does not want to be here. Bring somebody else in that wants to be here, that wants to be a Detroit Lion. And, hey, there's an Allen Robinson out there. Maybe you could go ahead and look out of free agency and bring him home. There are other options. Just that for, for what Dan Campbell, Sheila Ford, Brad Holmes, they're trying to create. You don't need a guy that does not want to be here. If he wants to be here, hey, more power to him. Knock out that long-term deal. Outside of that, nah. What if the Lions just blindside us today and franchise Romeo Aquara and we're, we just had no idea that was coming? Because I wouldn't mind that. Huh. To me, it, it's it's Aquara and Galladay as the two main pieces you got to hold on to. And obviously, our defense was trash last year. So try to keep something on defense. Otherwise, you, my God. Yeah, you. De- I, I would. I would not be opposed to franchising on Romeo Aquara because you. The Lions still have to add more pieces on that defense, but you don't want to lose a good piece. And Okwara is a good piece. And um, just just stay out of the Kenny Galladay business unless you're doing a long-term deal. Yeah. Joey, what do you think? Uh, I, I, you want to go I, defense I, on franchise tag, or you're, you're stuck with getting Galladay, right? I, I'm definitely stuck on that. But, I mean, you look at yesterday, the Lions announcing that they released Christian Jones, too. So it's like – there's got to be something that we keep on this. Yeah. There's yeah. got well, to. We got till 4 o'clock to find out. There may be an extension this year, I heard, with the NFL, but there may not be. So right now we're going by the 4 o'clock deadline. Yeah. And well, now, now we, we already said what we will want to do. What do you, what do you predict? Because I predict that they are not going to do it. Um. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do it either. Same. Honestly. Same. You don't think they're going to? Nope. So we'll be uh, Quintez Cephas will be the only wide receiver on the roster, and Williams. Oh yeah, and Williams. I I forgot they just signed Ty- <laughs> Tyro Williams. But like for real, you look at that. I mean, Quintez is going to be our number one receiver next year. It, Quintez it'll be a great number two. We he's not a number one. He doesn't have the speed to stretch the field and be that guy. But I think he's a great possession receiver to have at your number two slot. 
Yeah. I just want to see, like, I, I, you know, I really like the idea of just bringing Allen Robinson home. I know you would love that St. Mary's guy. Yeah. I, I just really like that idea. And, you know, also just to poach him away from the Bears. That would just, that would just love that. Anything we can do to hurt the Bears, I'm all for. Um, and speaking of St. Mary's, uh, your old high school Ferndale played St. Mary's last night in basketball, man. Why do we have to bring that up? Because 10th team in the state. Come on, Corey. Yeah, you guys are number 10 in the state. St. Mary's number one in the state. It was a good game. Um, one kid from St. Mary's, Will Smythe, had 40 points. And uh, Ferndale, the entire team, had 40 points. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty good game, Corey. Pretty, pretty good game. No, it wasn't. I'm hurt. But, you know, hey, the Eagles, I don't. they weren't no number 10 in the state when I was there. So, hey, yeah. just, just to have that. Shout out to Ferndale. Yeah, no disrespect to Ferndale. I Great let program. the Eaglets beat the Eagles, though. Yeah, the baby Eagles beat the beat the big Eagles. Uh, let's take a quick 15-second break. When we come back, we're going to touch on a few more franchise taggies that could be signed today. And then we're going to get into, I love this, uh, Nick Leach, one of our content contributors here at Woodward Sports. He redesigns uniforms. And the concepts that he came up with yesterday, I want everybody's opinion on this. So if you're on Facebook, make sure you're ready to chat and let us know uh, what uniforms you're like. If you're on YouTube, same thing. Twitter, make sure you're tweeting us. And if you're listening on the app, uh, just keep listening and go to social media and let us know. Let's take a quick 15-second break. We'll be right back. An ounce at Michigan Dispensaries is over $300. Why pay that when you can grow your own? With just one light, you can pull down over 48 ounces every harvest. Do that math and then come see us at Grow Green, where we have everything you need to start growing and a staff of master growers to help guide you. Click growgreenmi.com. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Joey, you got to give a shout-out real quick. Yes, Friday we all have something to do. And you're pissed at me because when I went there last week to go shoot some videos at Crumble Cookies in Rochester Hills, I didn't bring you back any cookies and you were pissed at me. So uh, this Friday is free cookie day. And I'm telling you, you got to come check them out. Right off of Rochester Road in Rochester Hills, next to the Imagine Theaters, it's Crumble Cookies, the newest cookie joint in town. And I'm telling you, my new favorite. Just come on by. Try a free cookie this Friday, literally all day. It's going to be 8 a.m. to midnight that you can get free cookies. That's awesome. Um, so we were talking about franchise tags, and obviously for the Lions, it's Kenny Galladay. Uh, around the league, there's like four other guys that I really wanted to touch on, just in skill positions. Obviously, we can get into linemen and linebackers and all that good stuff. But you mentioned it earlier, Allen Robinson from the Bears. He is also available to be franchised today, and the Bears don't really seem like they're making a move at all with him. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead and Bears. Go ahead and be the Bears. Go ahead and do something stupid like you did last season with the Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky situation. Go ahead and screw this up royally so a team like the Detroit Lions can go in there and swoop in and bring home Allen Robinson. I don't know what they're thinking, honestly, by if they, if they don't do it, but if they, if they decide to move away from Allen Robinson, I think that will, one, be a mistake, and – Whoever gets them, they're getting a hell of a wide receiver. When you look at the dollar amount, aren't these kind of going to somewhat be similar deals? Because Allen Robinson's last deal was the three-year, $42 million contract. So on this next contract deal, I mean, he's, he's probably going to go up to about the $18 million range, don't you think? I mean, he's earned it. Like, we talk about Kenny Galladay hasn't proven it for long enough. Allen Robinson has proven it every step of the way with probably some of the worst quarterback play in the league. Um, if I'm the Bears, though, I'm holding on to him yeah. because he is a leverage piece to get that quarterback in there. Like, if you don't have him and you're stuck with Miller at wide receiver and that's that's your only guy, Russ Wilson isn't going to want to come play for you. No, Deshaun Watson doesn't want to come play for you. He's leaving Houston because they just shipped out D hop like the, he doesn't want to join a team that doesn't have the weapons so if I'm Chicago like Corey said as a Detroit fan I hope they drop the ball on this but they better franchise tag Allen Robinson last season Robinson had 1250 and six TDs the Lions could definitely use all of that and also too Robinson's quarterback play is going to be drastically improved. You're going from a freaking Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky to Jared Goff. That may be like a hallelujah moment from him. So, Lions, go ahead and move on from Galladay. You know, pick up the phone, see what Allen Robinson wants, and get him back in the 3-1-3. 
ASAPly. Right. Yeah. No, I would love to get Allen Robinson back here. As you know, he um, he went to Orchard Lake St. Mary's, my old high school, and then he went to Penn State. And I've just had a lot of fun watching this kid grow up. And now I can't even call him a kid. He's a millionaire, and he's a great football player. So, Allen Robinson, no disrespect, but we would love to see you back here in Detroit way over Kenny Galladay. I, I would take Allen Robinson 100 times over 100 over Kenny Galladay. And you look sure. at attitudes, too. Like, I guarantee you Allen Robinson would be the type of person that actually wants to be here. Right. You mentioned it's his home, so it's like this would be such a good transition because I feel like Goff and him would be a great connection, too. Yeah, and another um, another wide receiver that is potentially up for franchise tagging is Chris Godwin. And Chris Godwin was only making about $800,000. He was still on his rookie deal last year when he won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a lot of weapons in Tampa Bay, but Tom Brady said he wants to bring back the whole damn crew. So maybe he'll um, he'll give them a team discount, but he's worth every bit of everything. Like I could see Atlanta reaching out to him or trying to trade Julio, or you know what? What would be really scary is if he went to the Packers. Don't please, say that. please don't. Don't say that. I, I think it, so I got to say it. The- Packers don't need no more weapons. They already have Aaron Rodgers. Now you're going to give him another receiver. I mean, well, already with Devontae Adams. Come on, man. They, they, we, they, come on. Let's, let's not think negative here. Let's not think negative here. Let's think about. Let's let's think, think they go to the AFC or somewhere. Not, let's not put that out there in the universe about anybody going to the Packers or the Bears. Yeah. Chris Godwin, um, he, he's up for grabs. And then you got a couple tight ends. We obviously don't need a tight end here in Detroit. <laughs> no. But we got rid of Jesse James, so there's there's a lot of money, dead money, that's not, no longer on the books. Hunter Henry is available, and Jonu Smith. I wouldn't mind having either of those guys as a secondary tight end, especially Hunter Henry. I really like him. Just hope that we use him because Jesse James was here and. He was just virtually just collecting a check for doing nothing, and I don't think that was I don't think that was his fault. I just think it was he was not utilized correctly. Uh, and I think it had a lot more to do with Hawkinson turning yeah. it on and becoming you know the monster that we knew he was gonna be. Like they brought in Jesse James to kind of fill that role, and Hawkinson just leapfrogged him essentially his rookie year. Yeah, like literally leapfrog. And I'm gonna be honest, I, during the NFL draft that year when they announced Hawkinson. I think there's video of this. I actually put. I was at the draft and I put my head, my head, and my hands just like, yeah. why what? do we do this now? I'm like, thank you. So you know what? I gotta apologize to the Lions. I got that one wrong. Y'all got that one right about getting T.J. Hawkinson. Phenomenal. Yeah, I just wish they could have gotten it right the first time they drafted a tight end in the first round. Like oh, that, that, boy. that's what seems to be the problem with the Lions. Like. The same thing with wide receiver. We get, you know, we got it Third wrong. Third time's the charm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we we got it wrong with Roy Williams. We got it wrong with Mike Williams. We got it wrong with Charles Rogers. But we got it right with Calvin. Okay, you know, so tight Calvin ends. We time. got it wrong with Pettigrew. <laughs> we got it wrong with Ebron. But we finally got it right. And it's like, man, if we could make these decisions correctly on the first swoop, it would save us so many more years of trying to do it again. Hopefully they make that right. Hopefully now that they have Brad Holmes in the front office, along with John Dorsey being one of these senior executives, they'll make the right choice in this year's draft. So. Yeah. So make sure you're following us on all social media at Woodward Sports. Uh, Corey's going to keep you updated on all the franchise tagging today and who becomes an unrestricted free agent if they don't get tagged and all the good news. So make sure you follow us there and uh, follow Corey as well. It's Corey E. Woods on Twitter. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got Joey's News. Hey, Joey, are the cookies ready? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not here in beds at all. Joey! Hmm. Why is one missing? Mm-hmm. I, I'm playing. I don't want on the floor. Joey, uh, open your mouth. Dang it, I got started. busted. But that was so worth it. I'm here I'm at here Crumble it. Cookies off of Rochester Road, right by the Imagine Theaters. And I'll tell you, oh, wait. No, these I'm are the best cookies I've ever had in my entire life. I am not exaggerating. So come try them out. Free cookie day this Friday. <clears throat> oh, this... Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show on the Woodward Sports Network. It is now time for Joey's News. Go ahead, Joey. So we just finished talking about all the franchise talk, franchise tag talk, and by 4 o'clock today, we'll be finding out if the Lions do franchise tag Kenny Galladay or not. And uh, broke yesterday, Adam Schefter 
telling us that he turned down a long-term contract extension in 2020 last season that would have paid him between 18 and 19 million dollars per season. It's tough Don't to turn that. down that money, man. Especially, I mean, after having a, a injury season like last year. But the Lions also released linebacker Christian Jones yesterday and Dak Prescott, the big news in the NFL. The Cowboys and Dak have reached a four-year, $160 million deal with $75 million guaranteed next year. Damn. Not a bad <laughs> year. <laughs> no. Hey, look at that flip, though. I mean, come on. He, get, he, he, he leaves it all on the field. He does. And had he not busted his ankle last year, he probably would have set some franchise records. So I, I don't really hate that. I just That's a lot of money to give a Dak Prescott. It is. Three days after being placed on administrative leave, Kansas and Les Miles have mutually agreed to part ways effective immediately. Good. He gone. He Get is. your ass out of here. Quit molesting college girls when you meet up with them off campus. Like, when this story broke last week, Corey and I kind of talked about this yesterday. I'm almost sick and tired of discussing these stupid-ass stories with coaches saying dumb shit to their team, racial stuff, to guys treating women like this. I feel like every week we have to cover one. And believe me, I, I understand. If I'm sick of it, imagine how the people that are being perpetuated against feel about it. <laughs> like... Les Miles, what are you doing trying to kiss girls when you meet them off campus? They're students. You're a grown-ass man. What are you doing? I get it. College girls are sexy. I search them on Pornhub all the time. But that's what I do. I don't pursue them outside of that. See, but it is a sickness because it could reach a point to where you become so addicted into searching and watching and all this that you actually want that in real life. And it, it's just... This sickness of a story is honestly just disgusting to me because it's a coach that people look up to, and then all of a sudden you have to hear this. And even the crazier part is, wasn't there talk about him even coming here? Yeah, a couple of times we you know they got rid of Brady Hulk when when they got rid of Brady Hulk and Harbaugh was um, being rumored to come come here initially, and then just this past year they were talking about firing him. Um, People wanted Harbaugh fired and wanted to bring Les Miles back home. Just imagine with all of the – U of M already just went through with a, a, that type of scandal recently, you know, not too long ago yep. where, where something just came out. Imagine firing Harbaugh, hiring Les Miles, and then this comes out. Um, I was one of those guys that wanted Les Miles here, so it's it's tough for me to say, uh, you know, but obviously I didn't know his character yeah, issues. Know I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, know the man. I just know what he did at done. LSU, and he was a hell of a football coach at LSU. I thought, okay, you know, I wanted him over Brady Hoke when they made that decision. I thought he should have been next up for Michigan in that way, and maybe it would have changed his future, you know. Maybe he wouldn't have tried to make out with female students when he met up with them off campus, which, how? Just... Answer me this. How does uh, the head football coach have access to female students, period? Like, I'm, I'm just thinking about Lloyd Carr. You see Lloyd Carr trying to big pimp it with some students back in the day? I mean, you're comparing Lloyd Carr, who looks like a grandpa, to Les Miles. Les Miles looks like a grandpa. Not a grandpa, though. But, but, but here's my thing about this whole Les Miles situation. I'm kind of confused how it got this far because there are reports out there that the LSU athletic director wanted him fired in 2013 so how did that not happen he they he recommended his firing what 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 fell through the cracks there and how did he get hired at Kansas like I, i'm just trying to figure that out i mean the only thing i can think of logically is don't try to figure it out just look at past history like you know how does jerry sandusky go yeah. years having showers with boys and nobody says anything how does larry nasser like molest girls for decades and have reports against them and those just somehow don't wind up being taken serious like we could go on and on and on you know the michigan scandal that uh, really didn't get really talked about like the larry nasser thing um this is just what happens with powerful people for some reason, and I don't completely understand it. Like, are people afraid to, quote unquote, take him down, or are they afraid that if they come forward, they won't be taken seriously? Are they afraid of the power structure? There's a million things that it could possibly be, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to these people just being horrible human beings. I think what it also boils down to is money. 
a lot of these schools, the football program brings so much freaking money that they don't want to go ahead and or the basketball program. You, you can name it. Like, you know, Duke's basketball program probably brings them a lot of money. Not trying to say Coach K do anything wrong. Right. I'm just saying, like, whatever school it is, if that sport brings that money, that guy has power. Just like you, you talked about with Penn State. Joe Pop, the power he had at Penn State. You saw what happened after that scandal came out. I think he died within like a week and a half. Yeah. I, of his firing. You don't say. know if those things are related, related or not. But, but, but it kind of makes you wonder. But facts is facts. facts. He did die uh, <laughs> shortly after it came came out that he, him and his teams were getting molested by Jerry Sandusky in the shower. It's just, I know I'm sick of talking about this stuff. I don't understand why people just can't act right. Just act right. Like, it, it's really that simple. And I get it. Like I said, I get it. College girls are sexy. You want to hang out with them. Like, you're an old man. You've maybe it's been a while since your wife gave you some. <laughs> I get all of those things. But do it with people that consent. Look, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm 34, going on 35. When I go up to go back to EMU and I'm around, um, just, you know, when I, was, when I went back to class as an older guy, I went to class and I went right home because I still feel like they're illegal. I'm like, man, these are little kids. Let me just go ahead and take my ass home. I could only, for you to be in your what 60s and 70s and being around them, come on. If I felt that way in my 30s and if I felt that way in my 30s, how are you in your 60s and 70s acting out like that? And just the consent, like that's the, the, why do you, it ain't hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. I mean, maybe if you look like Les Miles, it's a little hard. But still, (laughs) like, with all that power that he's got on the university, like, just try and get a yes. Right? (laughs) Not that you even should be going after that, but just go on Tinder and swipe till somebody matches with, like, you're destined for one. Listen, I see some of these guys on Tinder, one of some of my homies, and I'm like, listen, if they can land somebody, Les Miles can land somebody. Yeah. So Les Miles is out at Kansas, probably never to coach again in the yeah. NCAA. And like I said, I did want him here, um, you know, and I wonder if Michigan's still going to claim him as a quote unquote Michigan man, because that's all you ever hear about when they hire somebody. Uh, let's Les push Miles. That to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Les Miles, uh, let's call him an LSU guy or a Kansas guy. Because <laughs> Michigan, you don't want any part of that right now. Let's uh, switch topics on this one, and let's talk about some winners. And I'm talking about my Grizzlies, Oakland University. They beat Northern Kentucky in the Horizon Tournament yesterday, and if they win tonight against their number one seed, Cleveland State, they are in the tournament, guys. And they helped me win my parlay last night, man. I oh, had, you made some money off I, of I them? had Cleveland State, I had Oakland, and then I had Oral Roberts. <laughs> that was my three-team parlay last night. And Oral Roberts won at the buzzer. But, Joey, you got to be in this locker room, man. Let's call Campy and get you out to the game. Oh, yeah. Honestly, Where are they like, playing at? Um, I got I got to do the research on that. Let me see. Okay. They're, um, I'm trying to see right now, too. Yeah, but Joey uh, went to Oakland Cleveland for State. everybody that's listening right now. Nah, He's an they, OU graduate. They're not home. They're not home? Yeah, no. they're at Cleveland State. Oh, uh, okay. I'm a proud Oakland University graduate, and you know the crazy part about this is, like I said, they're playing number one Cleveland State. They lost to them by only two on February 6th. So this is a big likelihood that they're going to get this W. So they'll be playing the Indiana Farmers uh, Coliseum today. Uh, Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Let's hit the road. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Indiana Farmers. That's a nice little name. But shout out to Daniel Oladapo dropping 19 points, too. We're going to need another good performance from him tonight. What you got to say, Fish? I'm assuming they're allowing fans, Joey, so you can go down to Indiana. Yeah, it's only a four-hour, five-hour drive, buddy. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Indiana Farmer, whatever the heck that court was called. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can leave right after the show, get there by 3, 4 o'clock. I think Fish is just trying to catch a ride right now. Right. Actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one I got is Oral Roberts advancing to Summit League final on this buzzer beater. I know you're excited about this one. I am. The finish to this game right there at the buzzer. Tie game, 88-88 to 88 for the W there. The little upset beating South Dakota State, the number one seed in their division there. I mean, how bad ass are those jerseys? Like, I want a jersey that just says Oral across the front. <laughs> <laughs> like, those are the most amazing jerseys ever. <laughs> oh, it says ORU. Never mind. I thought it just said Oral across the front. That's We got to make those jerseys. We'll make you one. Yeah, I'm always rooting for Oral Roberts. Like that, that, that's my team, baby. That's my team, baby. Be like, or I'm gonna get you number zero too on top of that. <laughs> 
Is that your news, Joey? That is my news there. All right, we got to give um, a shout out to Grow Green. Grow Green MI is the spot you need to go for all your grow needs soil, nutrients, lights, pretty much everything that you could possibly imagine under the sun they have for your grow. And if you look at the prices at some of these dispensaries, you're talking $300, $400, $500, $600 an ounce. You could grow a whole plant for less than that, and then you could do the math. You know, you get your ounces for like 125 bucks, 150 if you grow them at home. You're saving a ton of money, plus you know exactly the nutrients that are going in it. You don't have to worry about where it came from. So make sure you go to growgreenmi.com today, mention Woodward Sports, or give them a call, 810-299-2900. Uh, let's take a quick 15-second break. When we come back, I love this. I love it. I love it. Anybody who likes Detroit sports, period. The uniforms, we redesigned them. All of them. And we want to see which color scheme is your favorite. Coming up next on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's only all-digital sports network. I'm looking to bring on another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to ten techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only ten and a half months, and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Stick. Uh, we're trying to figure out. I want my music back, man. I want my Joey's News and it's Fish. So we're trying to figure that out if you hear us talking a little bit during the commercial break. But thank you to everybody that's commenting right now on all of our chats and listening to our app, which is free for download in Apple or Google stores. So... I love this, okay? Um, so much. Yeah, Pittsburgh is, it, we talked about it last week, I believe. All of Pittsburgh's teams are black, gold, and white. You know, you got the Pirates, you got the Penguins, and you got the Steelers. They're all the same color. So we took that concept and applied it to Detroit sports teams. And, you, Alex, you could just throw up um, them in random order, and I'll, I'll discuss which ones they are. So here we go. This one is based off the Pistons color scheme. So if every team in Detroit was red, white, and blue like the Pistons, this is what the uniforms would look like. Joey, what do you think of these color schemes for all of Detroit uniforms? It, it, I always look at the Lions one on, on them, and it reminds me of the Bills way too much. Yeah. And then the Red Wings on this one, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't like that blue on the Red Wings uniform. Yeah. There's another blue that I like that we'll talk about soon. But the, the, the Tigers one is sweet. I, I will say the Tigers one does look cool with that colors. Um, the, 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 blue is, the blue is just, I don't know. Outside of that Pistons one, and I, and I still am not a fan of that Pistons jersey, that, that blue is just, I don't know, it's, it's too loud for me. On the Lions, on the on the on the, oh yeah, on the Lions, the Lions one, on Lions one, and on the uh, the Tigers um, baseball hat. See, Look, I really um, like this because uh, I think the Lions it, Honolulu blue like doesn't really it, it's not really a hard color, you know. Yeah. Like it kind of makes us look soft. But I love the Tigers uniforms in this, and we got a lot of comments also about people liking the Red Wings uniform in this color too. Joe, don't you don't like, like it? it? I don't. It's, think, it's too bold. It really the, the, is. The, the, I'm just having a hard time with the Red Wings one because the Red Wings logo and color scheme is so iconic. Right. That I just don't – as much as I want – some of the team's colors have changed. The Red Wings is just too iconic to mess with. Yeah, we got people commenting right now. Too much blue, Kendra says. The yeah. Lions look like Boise State. That's Kenny it, says. Boise State. Boise State. You think that's what they look like? Yeah, that's exactly a Boise. Because if you switch that, all you got to do is just switch that, switch that red to, a, to an orange, and boom, you got them. That's the same exact blue. And then the Tigers look like the Rangers. Throw that up one more time real quick. Yeah, the Tigers look like the Rangers. I don't know. I I really like the Tigers uniforms. I like this blue running through all the uniforms. Not sure if this is my favorite of them all, but I definitely I I would rock this. I I would buy those jerseys. Nah, I wouldn't buy them. You wouldn't buy those jerseys? Uh-uh. None of them. That's that's so hard on the uniform. The Lions look like Kansas colors. And that's true. I mean the Jayhawks, they they kind of do look like Jayhawks colors. But I could go with those. Um uh, Alex, let's throw up the next one. Now this, <laughs> it's so weird, but I like it. 
Like, the, uh, to me, we got a lot of comments because these are all up on all of our social media if you want to go look at them and spend some time with them. And Nick Leach uh, designed them, so shout out to Nick Leach yeah. for doing that. This one, a lot of the people love the Pistons version of this. That, that stuck out to me immediately. I, I like the Pistons version of this one. That's a, that's a nice mock-up right there. Why, why do you think people are so drawn to the Pistons version of this? I just think with that, with that, the way the blue is and that that orange, it just makes the it makes it pop. That red in that jersey was just kind of just so bland and and blah. It just that that orange just gives it a different kind of pop for me. Yeah, there are no basketball teams that are like navy and orange. orange. Which is really interesting when you think about it. I mean, usually color schemes are repeated and repeated and repeated, but no, there there aren't many teams like that that are orange. I'm going to be honest. What? I hate every single one of those. Really? Not even the Tigers one of those colors. Really? I really don't. How can you hate ev- Like, I think, honestly, I think that's the best collection of them all. I just don't like, like gray. Gray like that as the main color just doesn't have any pop to it for me. The gray on that, again, going back to Red Wings, the gray on that Red Wings just looks nah. But that, but that, that Pistons one nailed it. The, the Lions one, I'm indifferent. I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rock it. Wouldn't want to see it. But that Pistons one goes hard. And of course the the Tigers one. I mean, that's just, just the Tigers. I love that one. See, that's the thing though. I feel like we say that just because we're used to it. What for the Tigers? Yeah. I mean, no. Nah, those are classic uniforms. But I really, out of all of them that we're gonna look at, I think this one, all of them are the strongest. Yeah, I think these all rate about an eight. And some of them, it's like 2, 10, you know, like I think on average, all of these are the strongest because I'd like the Lions to play in those uniforms. I think those uniforms would be badass to play in. A lot better than the white and Honolulu blue uniforms that we rock. Oh, those white, those those Lions white uniforms are just, those are, those, those are the most boring uniforms in the NFL to me. So we're getting some comments on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Tigers colors are by far the best. Uh, still no for the wings. It's got to be red and white, obviously, because they're the red wings. And that does make a lot of sense. That Tigers joint goes hard. I like that, too. So, yeah, to me, that's my favorite collection of all four of these. Uh, let's throw up the other one. Now, this one's interesting, too. Like, you talked about looking like the Bills. To me, this still, one looks like the yeah. Bills. <laughs> for the Lions, at least. This one, I am... This one, I like this collection better outside of the Lions one because I think that one, I don't think the Lions one gives me really Bills vibes. It gives me almost kind of Arizona Cardinals vibes. Okay. With, the, with, that, with that red. It's a little more but, of a bolder wet, yeah, red. Yeah. But I, I, like, I like this collection um, better. The Pistons one, not bad. Red Wings, of course, is iconic. The Tigers one. T- Tiger, Tigers one is not Tigers one is not a bad mock-up if they were, if they were to uh, change the colors or whatnot. But... Yeah, yeah, so obviously this one is all based off the Red Wings color yeah. scheme. Um, you know, I, lo- I look at the Tigers uniform, and it reminds me a lot of the Angels uniforms. And so I, I don't necessarily love, love, love the Tigers in red like that. Pistons, I think they look fine. Yeah, I- Pistons, look, Pistons look fine. I think the Pistons hold... First, I think it's just that that rendition of the Pistons jersey. Any kind of change to it, I'm gonna like. You don't like those Motor City jerseys? I hate Me those too. Motor City jerseys. Out of all of the teams in the NBA who switched their jerseys up to have, I think it's that one's their statement jersey. We have the Pistons have the weakest one. Go look at all the statement jerseys. I, I love the Pistons. I, I, I hope. I mean, I'm going to hop on a session later. I hope they don't, you know, block me from hopping on there now. Because you're hating on yeah, the jerseys. I'm hating on the, but they got to change. Hey, Big Sean, you're, po- you're the new director of creative, you know, innovation. Change them damn jerseys. Next year is yeah. the Big yeah, Sean jerseys. Not yet. Yeah, next yep. year. Yeah, next year. Change them damn jerseys because those statement jerseys are ugly. Yeah, no, um, I can't wait to see what Big Sean comes out with for the Pistons jerseys next year. It's got to be hard. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Be. You look at all these jerseys, though, I feel like the only one that you can't really touch is the Red Wings. It's you, just you such can't. a simple red and white with the red wing on it. Obviously, it's got to still be red. But just the I, other I, ones, the Pistons I, I, one I for think, sure. I think when you're talking about changing our, the, the, of the four major sports, when you're talking about changing jerseys, I think the red, I think the Lions and the Pistons – you can do you can you those are up for change because they they need change but the red wings and the tigers 
I just think they are too iconic to touch from the color scheme to the logo. You just cannot, you just can't touch those. Like that deep, that Red Wings jersey, you rocked it anywhere. Everybody knows. Tupac knows what, rocked it, so everybody yeah, can rock it. Everybody knows what's up. <laughs> that old English D fitted, it's it's iconic. Yep. Like, I mean, man, it's, it's, it's up there to me. I, I think it's the best. Lo, you know, fitted cap in the world. I mean, I know people like their Yankees fitted. I, Man, nah, I get throw that crap out of here. It's an in it, really. Yeah, Come get on. that out of here. But that old English D fitted. It's like even if you don't wear a hat, you don't have to be a person that wears hats and you got an old English D fitted. Yeah, um, you know me. I love my old English D fitted. I got like fifteen of them at home. <laughs> and then the last color scheme for uh, this little project, if we're gonna throw this up right now, Ooh. is the Lions color scheme. Now these are kind of crispy. I, I will give you this. I just uh, that color in white just always looks so soft. See, but look at the. I, I don't know how I'm saying this, but the Red Wings jersey looks so dope like that. Mm. It really does. It, honestly, it really and, does. Like all of them really look sweet. The basketball team looks like the Nuggets. Yeah, like you just dash throwing a dash of yellow, and you definitely got the 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 Carmelo Anthony era Nuggets. Yep, and then uh, the Tigers. Uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan of blue and light blue. I, I just don't love this for they, the Tigers. They, they, they look like they almost look like the freaking Tar Heels. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's definitely that baby blue. Yeah. Um, so out of all four of these, what color scheme would you pick for all four of our professional franchises? Because like we said, the reason we did this is because of Pittsburgh. All of their teams wear the same color. So if you had to pick one color scheme from one team for all of Detroit, who are you picking? And let's run back through these, all of them real quick, Alex, so we can uh, catch everybody up to what we were talking about. This is the first one. This is obviously the Pistons color scheme. Uh, let's take a good look at this. You got you know the Lions looking... All all blue. The Red Wings, I do like this because you still get the red in the jersey. It's not bad. And then the Tigers kind of look like the Angels. See, but. I think with that one, they got to swap out the red and the blue. Make it more focus on the red, but have that touch of blue in it. Okay, so this was the Pistons version. Next, we have the Tigers version, which I love this, man. To me, this is the hardest across the board. It, 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 it's, the le it's the least loud. Like uh, of, of the, it doesn't. It doesn't. All the, all the colors. They look, the other ones a little bit more vibrant. This one is a little bit more subdued. Yeah. So, Joey, you don't you don't rock I with this them. at all. I hate them. Really? I just gray to me has just never been my color. Yeah. And, and I feel like gray just, it, especially when you look at the uniforms that we do have, gray just like it looks cheap. It looks like gray was the cheapest of all the colors to get. So that's what we chose. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't mind gray. I've worn I gray uniforms this, my whole life. I don't like that gray rendition in this in the mock up. But as far as gray as a color, man, I'm in front the Lions color rush gray jerseys. That is they they are badass. Yep, yep. And then let's go to the next one. This is obviously Red Wings, red and white, straight up across the board. This is probably my least favorite. Wow. That, yeah. This is actually my favorite. Me too. I, this really? Is my me too. I just, I just hate the Lions. I think what's throwing me off from, from loving it is just I just hate the Lions logo in general. But I like this one the most. And also, too, the Red Wings are the most winningest team in our um, out of all of our professional sports. So I think that if, we're go, if, the, if the teams were to follow suit behind a team, who better to follow behind than the Red Wings? And then the last one. Man, <laughs> the Honolulu blue, like, uh, the, actually, I take it back. This is my least favorite. See, but it's like, at the same time, you got it. Like, you look at it, and it's like, oh, that's dope. Oh, that's dope, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know what's funny? All of them are dope besides the original that it comes from. Right. <laughs> Seriously. So if I had to rank them, I would go uh, Tigers colors first. That's what I would want for the entire city. Pistons would be second. Red Wings colors would be third, and Lions would be last. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pretty much go the entire opposite of you. I'm <laughs> gonna start with the Red Wings, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna go with the Lions, and then I'm gonna go with the Pistons, then end it with the Tigers. Um, my same order is Joey's. I mean, it's, so you it's, like the blue? I mean, it, I'm not. I'm. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't. I don't hate it. But also, I do want to say this. 
Hey Nick, that is nothing against you. The the mockups were dope. Yeah, I just I, the mockups were the mockups were fire. I just for the teams it's like oh, <laughs> can't do it. I, I would like to see though all teams rock in one color like that. Yeah, I thought. I mean, Pittsburgh. I think it's awesome, and you know, it helps definitely if you're a fan. <laughs> you but, just gotta buy one thing, and you can wear it to every game. Yeah. But the thing to it though is like. To what Corey said, I mean, the Red Wings are our most powerful organization, I would say. And when you look at which team we would have to follow if we were to all be one color, it's got to be the Red Wings. So it doesn't have to be. What but is it going to be the Blue Rings? Wings? That's the thing. I mean, they actually have a color in their name, so it's tough to change the Red Wings to blue. But like I said, I'm going Tigers all day. Throw up the Tigers one one more time, just so these fools can get Ugh. an actual look at this, <laughs> I'm so that turn th they can understand so how awesome this is. So yeah, how I, do you not like this over all of ugly. them? Ugly. I like the Ugh. Pistons one over all of the Pistons renditions, even the current Pistons covers. I like the Pistons one. It's just that. That Lions and that Red Wings one is is throwing me all the way off. The Tigers one, I mean, I love that. But the, the, the top two on, on this one, just throwing me all the way off. Although I will say, you know what? The Lions one is throwing me off. The, Tigers, the, the, the Red Wings one, I still wouldn't change, but yeah. See, I like the Lions one, man. I really do. I think it actually looks tough. Like, all those uniforms look tough You to can't me. say gray looks tough. Why? Gray does not look tough. It's not a color that, like, when you look at it, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> there's, no, there's no statement to that color. Well, those are our um, redesigns done by Nick Leach. They're up now on all of our social media pages, and we had some great interaction on Twitter. We had some great interaction on Facebook mm. and, of course, on Instagram. I, I kind of want to read through some of the comments on Twitter right now because this thing went absolutely crazy yesterday. Um, we're saying, I think they all look like crap in each other's style, so you always get the hater. Um, at first glance, Pistons, but then Tigers, uh, Tigers colors for the win. So somebody agrees with me. Of course, me. you read the one comment that agreed with you. I'm scrolling right here, That's man. That's the one comment, the one red. idiot that agrees. The red. I wouldn't want to change the name to the Blue Wings. Uh, since we have a team called the Red Wings, probably red. Uh, after reading the description, my initial thought was Honolulu blue and silver. But after looking at the pictures, red and white was by far the hardest. Uh, don't mind the Lions, but the Tigers look pretty cool. So it's just written it, by it, Stick Radio. No, that's uh, actually <laughs> Phil Walker wrote that. Joey, uh, <laughs> Wings, Tigers, Pistons, Lions in that order. Uh, Tigers going to take it into consideration the navy blue and white. Uh, Red Wings would be pretty dumb of any other color. A lot of people commented that. Lions colors easily. So it's all over the map where people are with this, and I, I love that. How everybody has a little bit different taste in this. I will say this again. Lions and the Pistons definitely need to change their logo. They need to change the logo and they need to change the, the, the team colors because they're, they're, both teams are going through their retooling. So if they're going through a retooling, both teams need to go through a rebranding. They need totally different identities. Uh, the, the Honolulu Blue, it's pretty much just been associated with misery for all fans. So why not go ahead and just create a whole new I Just color. go for it. Yeah, just go ahead and go for it. Change the logo. And also, too, we're talking about the Lions. Lions are supposed to be fierce, supposed to be tough. Heck, I got a, I'm got wearing a lion on my um on my neck right now. This looks harder than the freaking Lions' current logo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the, the, if out of all the teams who need to change the logo, it needs to be the Lions first, the Pistons second, Tigers, and Wings, stay as you are. I love this comment. If they change their team, Woodward Sports has to put a sale on all their hoodies. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to woodwardsports.com, click on shop right now. Uh, Joey's actually rocking our hockey hoodie. You know why I'm rocking this? Why? I'm going to make you all jealous. I'm going to the Red Wings game tonight, y'all. Really? Wow. I'm going to the Wings game tonight. When is the last time you went to a sporting event, a professional sporting event? It's been a minute, minute, minute. Yeah, can't remember. Corey, when's the last time you? Oh, you went to a Lions game during the season, you son of a. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Truth gets really invited like... to Lions games when nobody's allowed there. I mean, was it really a game? Uh, yeah, I that's mean, true. They, they were, yeah, they were on the field. <laughs> um, I, I can't. I honestly can't remember the last professional. Oh, it was in Washington. I went to the Washington uh, football team oh, that's for, messed up. versus the Lions two years ago. Wow. 
It's been, honestly been that long because I didn't go to any Tigers games last summer. Yeah. I don't think anybody did, really. I didn't go to any Pistons games. So, wow, the last game, I, the last live sports I saw was in Washington. Eek. That sucks. Yeah. Your life sucks. Fish, what's the last um, professional game you went to? Last year, January 24th, Pistons Grizzlies. Damn, <laughs> my man knows the date. Who won that game, Fish? Uh, Pistons. Oh, no, Grizzlies. Grizzlies won. What was Grizzlies the final won? score? Was, Pistons lost by like 20. What was the temperature that day? Cold. <laughs> Fish, you, that's I, awesome. I that think you could... Josh Jackson, is that he's on the Grizzlies, right? He went off for like, I don't know, 20 or 30 points. Okay. Okay. I, I want to look up the exact stat line for that game. Yeah. And Fish just lists it all there, off to there, us. There was a Grizzly fan in front. I wanted to punch him. Really? Oh. Yeah, he was just hes a Josh Jackson fan. Okay. Uh. Well, Fish, we're working on getting you a camera in there so we can see your beautiful face when you're talking to us. So we'll have that by this afternoon. Okay, buddy? I don't think anything anyone wants to see it. I think, I think everybody wants to see Fish's beautiful face. Um, we got to give a shout-out to my bookie. I was able to hit on my three-team parlay last night, so oh. shout-out to my bookie. Ten bucks got me 112, Joey. Who helped you win that money, though? Which team? Uh, Oakland University helped me win that money, baby. Okay. Uh, and Cleveland State helped me win that money. And then, of course, Oral Roberts with that last second put back help me win that money and you know what like i put ten dollars on it it's not like uh, i was sitting there but it made every game last night interesting to me and that's what i love about online gambling and how it's illegal here in michigan and you can go to mybookie.com right now and put in 50 bucks to start your account enter my promo code or enter promo code woodward they'll hook you up with an additional 25 bucks that's all you got to put in you don't got to put in thousands like this is a you know, put in 50 bucks. You can do parlays for like three weeks for five bucks each. And you'll have some fun with some of these games, especially with the tournament coming up. You're going to want to be doing some gambling. So make sure you go to mybookie.com today. Enter promo code Woodward when you sign up. Like I said, all you got to do is put in minimum of 50 bucks, and we'll match it up to 50%. So do that right now, mybookie.com. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, it's tournament time. So we got to talk about the best Michigan and Michigan State tournament teams of all time. You guys ready to do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll do that next on the Woodward Sports Network. I mean, we're inside Grogreen right now, and they have everything. I'm talking, you got your active air fans, you got your big lights over there, big pots, little pots, and Joey, what are you doing right now? Getting some sun. That's yeah. not what those lights are for. Feels nice. Go to Grow Green MI today to get all your growing needs and a tan. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. My name is Stick. Thank you to everybody that's listening on the app and checking in on all of our social media this morning at Woodward Sports. Um, so Michigan, Michigan State, now that it's official, pretty much both of them are making the NCAA tournament. One of the lists I came across was the top 50 tournament teams of all time. And I was scrolling through, obviously, it's a lot of North Carolina. It's a lot of Duke. <laughs> you know, the, It's all the, North Carolina. Yeah, it's, it's all Duke. <laughs> it's all North Carolina and Duke. And um, there's four teams from Michigan and Michigan State that made up this list. And you guys kind of want to go through them and talk about them real quick? Yeah. Um, actually, first, let's have you guys guess. Who do you think? What teams would there be in the top 50 of all time? I mean, Michigan State around like 2008 or 2009 with Kalen Lucas has got to be in there. They did not win a championship. These yeah, are didn't. Yeah. Oh, it's all championship it, ones. It's not all because I got to preface that because obviously I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. The Fab Five is in this. Oh, they wow. didn't win a championship, <laughs> but they were one of the greatest college teams of all time. With, we can all agree on that. Yeah. But, yeah, Kalen Lucas, that squad, no. not on the list. Not on the list. Let's start it off. Number 40. They make the list at number 40. 88-89 Michigan Wolverines. They won the national championship this year. Uh, remember Glenn Rice? Rice, yep. Yep. Sarah, Glenn and Sarah Palin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Glenn Rice, um, he, he played for the Hornets. He played for the Lakers. He scored 25.6 points a game, and he had over 50% from three-point land that season. And 
I'm sorry about the grainy footage, but this was from 1989. They did not have <laughs> actual real footage. This is when they beat Seton Hall in one of the closest championship games of all time. Obviously, they went to overtime. Um, there's Glenn Rice right there. He's talking. And, uh, yeah. yeah we're afraid to be that so long ago. That, I that, that pretty shot. good. Yeah, you suck. You suck, Seton Hall. jerseys are rough. You got Steve Fisher right there. And what's – oh, this is the Fab Five. This is the Fab Five one. This isn't the 88-89 guys. Um, but Glenn Rice, 88-89, that is the team. Uh, their leading rebounder, Loy Vaught. Do you guys remember him at yeah. all? Vaught was the man. Didn't he play for the um, Clippers? Uh, yeah, he was He was a longtime starter in the pros. They also had Terry Mills, who was a piston. Yep. Remember? Tree Mills. He'd, he'd be shooting those threes from the top of the key. So that is the number 40 team. And I kind of feel like that team got a raw deal. Because mm -hmm. shortly after that, the Fab Five came, and nobody really cared that they won a championship in 88 and 89. That's just crazy. You win a title, and then... So here comes the Fab Five who didn't win a title, and they are remembered as the more iconic bunch that played at Michigan. I wonder, how do you feel as a champ? Right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can't argue, though, when you look at the star power on that team. Obviously, they didn't end up winning, so that star power didn't matter. But for Glenn Rice to be shooting over 50% from threes, that's one hell of a season right there. I mean, he was a he was not only was he a baller in college, he was an absolute baller in the pros. And then, um, you know, Glenn Rice was just a beast. Twenty five points a game, like <laughs> that doesn't happen because we talked about that last week. You know, like when a college player has a good game, it's like they have nineteen points. It's crazy. Like nowadays, it really is like that. But I mean, you look at back then, like there used to be elite scores. I mean, you look at Steph Curry when he was in college; psh, them stats were through the roof. Right. Well, and then who do you think is ranked third out of the top four Michigan, Michigan State teams of all time? Got to be, I mean, you got to have the 99, 2000 Spartans up there somewhere. Boom! Coming in at number 32 of the top 50 teams of all time. The 99, 2000 Michigan State Spartans led by Mateen, Mateen. Cleaves and the Flintstones, baby. Like, Was this the first title they had? Uh, no, no, we'll get into that later. <laughs> but this was a great team, man. Look at these guys. Oh, that was second. Yep. Yeah, it was their second title. But Mo P, I mean, he, he ended up being a great pro. He he ended up, what, playing in Toronto for a bit. Mateen Klee is probably one of the greatest college point guards of all time. Yeah, Mateen had a great career. Um, Unfortunately, you know, he, he got drafted to the Pistons, and that, in that year, I wanted Mo, the, the Lions. I'm not the Lions. The Pistons to draft Mo Peep didn't happen, but he had, a, like you said, he had a great college career. Um, uh, consummate floor general. Can't say enough about him. And um, how old were you guys when that was going on? Seven. You were seven? Uh, I want to say I was 13, 14. Okay, so you guys were old enough to remember it and stuff like that. I was at the prime age of 17. And I was away at college at University of Detroit, and that very night when they won that championship, we drove straight to Michigan State University and partied our ass off in Cedar <laughs> Village. And I may or may not have been a part of a couple couch burnings, even though I didn't go to the school. <laughs> but for real, that was like one of – it was almost perfect time. I graduated high school in 99. They win it my freshman year of college, and my God – if anybody went to Michigan State or anywhere near Michigan State, you drove up there for that night. I ended up sleeping in my car that night. Like it was, it was great. You didn't, you, you didn't find someone to at least get a little dorm room, man. Come on. Ah, uh, no, I was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the mission of that night. I'm impressed you got back to your car though. Yeah, uh, it was a cold night. <laughs> we had to sleep in the car, but that's what you do when you're at Michigan State. We tried to crash some dorm rooms, but dude, that weekend Michigan State was so out of control. Like that's one thing I wish, just that every generation gets to experience something like that. Yeah, especially in college, I feel like it's such next level because, yeah, when NBA and professional teams win, it's going to be crazy. But like college, I feel like people are so much more passionate about their teams because they actually had a part of that university. And 
the cool part about the college kids getting involved in it is they're college kids. <laughs> like they, they celebrate a lot harder because it they got mean, no work tomorrow. They don't care. Exactly. It's it's just they're already partying at state anyways, and then you give them a reason to celebrate their spartyhood, and it just was next level. I didn't get to enjoy none of that <laughs> at Eastern Michigan. None of it. Hell no, nah. Eastern Michigan. I mean, you know, shout out to Coach Ramsey. You know. Delta knew, but uh, we didn't. Basketball wasn't our thing. We didn't, sports weren't our thing in Eastern Michigan. We 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 sucked. So I'm, I'm. But imagine if Eastern made the tournament and won a couple games. Like you guys would be partying your ass off at Eastern. Oh look, when Eastern made the freaking quick lane bowl, we came out in numbers. <laughs> like, I mean, is that the one at Ford Field? That was the one at Ford Field. So you know, long story short, I went back to school and I graduated as part of. Um, our graduation year from the school, they gave all the graduates a ticket to the uh, Quick Lane Bowl. And even, not even just the students, anybody who went to EMU. The Pitt side, it was, it was, it was some people there. The EMU side, whew, that's awesome. Everybody was there, and we almost won. <laughs> we had them by this much. That much. All right, the number two team to ever play for Michigan or Michigan State. What do you guys think? I mean, Fab. Yeah, it's got to be the Fab Five, but we already went through um, the 99-2000 Spartans, and the Fab Five's got to be like a, a notch above that. You are correct. Steve Fisher made history by starting five freshmen, known as the Fab Five. I mean, Chris Webber, Jawan Howard, who is currently at Michigan. Once again, sorry for the blurry footage, but this is how we used to watch TV back in the day. Look at those warm-ups, man. <laughs> those but are sweet. Chris Webber was such a monster back then. Just an absolute monster. Um, they they obviously started five freshmen. Chris Weber was the team's biggest star. 19 points um, per game, 10 boards, two blocks, and that was all in 92-93. Has also retired a sensational career as a slick passing or power forward for the Kings. And then, of course, Chris Weber played here for the Pistons when we were trying to fill that center role after Ben Wallace left. Number 84. Yep, that was such a weird, weird. Dude, Juwan Howard still looks the exact same. Doesn't he? <laughs> he really Look does. Look at that block by Weber, though, man. True story. So when I was leaving my intern days at the Pistons, they had a Chris Weber authentic Pistons jersey in the Pistons store. I bought it. How much do you think I paid for it? $30. Hundred dollars. One two two fifty. Two dollars and eighty four cents. Oh, oh was close. At least they threw the eighty four in there yeah. to honor the jersey. <laughs> two dollars and eighty four cents. Damn. But look at Michigan, man. Like this team was so fun to watch. Chris Weber had mitts. Like when he got the ball in his hand, the ball almost disappeared. Look at Jalen Rose out there. And now Jalen's one of my favorite sports commentators. Like this team was just chock full of talent. Jimmy King. Look at that. Oh, what I love is that they're still around, you know? Like, yeah. like, like Jalen's a big part of sports still. Obviously, Jawan Howard, no secret, the man here in Michigan. But the fact that they never won a national championship just kills me. Because they would honestly, they'd probably be top 10 on this list. I mean, oh, right yeah. now they're sitting at number 16, so they're already pretty they, close. They win one title, and you're arguably calling them the most they still, it's still in the, top, the conversation for the most iconic group, but if they won at least one title, they would probably be hands down. Right. Yeah, what an amazing time to be a Michigan fan back then. And honestly, look at They changed the game with shorts. They changed the game with black socks. They changed the game with just swag and culture. And, you know, when they were playing, they did have to go up against some pretty competitive teams like Christian Leitner's team, Grant Hill's team. Like, there were... There were some monsters back then in college ball, and that's when college you would stay the whole way through and either play yeah. till you were a junior or a senior. It wasn't quite the one-and-done show that it is now. So Fab Five looking phenomenal. They're sitting at number 16. Then the highest-ranked team to ever play in the state of Michigan. Do you guys uh, want to take a guess at this? I, I have an idea. Um, I had to see what year he played because I just wanted to make sure I got it right. But it's got to be... That um, it's got to be the Spartans from like the I want to say seventy eight, seventy nine with uh, Magic, and Greg Magic Kelsey. Johnson. There, you are correct. Uh, the seventy eight, seventy nine Michigan State Spartans, led by none other than Magic Johnson and our boy Greg Kelser, who now calls Pistons games. So if you didn't know, uh, Greg Kelser was actually a hell of a college player, like almost better than Magic Johnson. 
Special K was the man. I, I can't 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 front him. Uh, my um, I know my one of my cousins. He doesn't. He's not a big, you know, Greg Kelser fan. But in college, he was a, he was man. From from what I went back and saw, of course, I wasn't even alive then. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Magic Johnson as a sophomore at the time earned superstar status. He would bring to the NBA seventeen point seven rebounds and eight assists a game. So he was almost a triple double machine in college. And then of course, you know. We talked about Greg Kelser. I believe he was averaging about 20 points a game during that time. And a lot of people sleep on Special K, man. Look at him. Look at him go. No three-point line on the court. That's how long ago it was. But that is How the, crazy is that? That is the best team to ever play coll- collegiately in the state of Michigan. Hard to, and, it's, and you know what? It's hard to argue. You can't. It's, it's, it's hard to argue that. You could if the Fab Five won a national championship. Oh, easily. Yeah, if, if, if Fab Five won a national title, then, yeah, they, you, you got the argument right there. But now, with them not having won one, yeah, hands down. But you could argue that Magic Johnson is the greatest player to ever come out of Michigan, period. The state of Michigan, collegiately. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, I'm trying to think of anybody else even close to his. Chris Webber, maybe. But you think Webber's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, just um, you know, in the NBA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a pro basketball Hall of Famer because if just off of statistics, the the, the pro football, the pro basketball Hall of Fame or the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, it is one of the easier ones to get into. So if you go on and off the numbers and what he's done, you got to go ahead and give it to um, give it to C Web. I mean, he's played a played a long long career and. You know, you got uh, Grant Hill in there. You got Tracy McGrady in there. And I I probably wouldn't have put um, Tracy McGrady in there. As, as as prolific of a scorer as he was, I probably wouldn't have put him in there. But since he is in there, you got to have C-Webb in there. I mean, you look at I mean, he almost averaged a triple-double. You know, it's like 20, 21 points a game, almost 10 points a rebound his entire career. Like, especially when you bring up the Tracy McGrady reference. I mean... I think Tracy McGrady, though, was definitely deserving of that. Of what? Being a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Just, he's had, he just <laughs> had, he, he's had so much throughout his career, and especially when you look at the organization that he was a part of. His stats make him a cusp Hall of Famer. His, like, legacy makes him a Hall of Famer. That's where, I, that's where I'm at with it, just because he was such a transcendent talent when he came out, such a young kid, too. And, you know, I don't know. He's related to Vince Carter, which a lot of people don't know. They're they're cousins. Can you imagine having that much talent in your family? It's just wild to me. Yeah. I, I always think that's crazy when sports families have multiple sports athletes come out of their uh, like Tom Brady was actually posting his niece th- the other day cuz she was uh, she's a softball player just launching home runs. He's like that's the most talented Brady that there is in sports. So that's you got awesome. Yeah, you got to love Tom Brady. Uh let's do this. Let's take a quick break. Um, when we come back, we want to talk about how drunk our Tigers fans are. Did you guys hear about this? No. How drunk they are? Yes. Let's do it. All right, Tigers fans, we did it! (laughs) We'll talk about it coming up next on the Woodward Sports Network. Morning, Art. Morning, D-Mac. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show. Thank you to everybody that's listening on our app right now. And thank you to everybody that is watching on all social media, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. And uh, make sure you follow us on Twitch, Instagram, and all that good stuff, too. We really appreciate you being a part of the morning show and being a part of Woodward Sports all day long. Like, we see people in the chat all day long here. And we absolutely love it. Thank you for spreading the word. Get your friends involved. Bring them in the chat. Share the posts. And let's just have some fun fun every day here at Woodward. Um, Wanted to celebrate a little bit. (laughs) Drunkness. For Tigers fans. Um, A list came out about who consumes the most alcohol per stadium and per per team. This is actually embarrassing. Where do you think the Tigers fell on this list? I mean, and I want to obviously take into account on this the fact that I've been to a lot of Tigers games, and it is not that packed in the stands. So if you're going to say that, we're pretty high up on this list. It's a little bit concerning, but also at the same time, a little bit proud of that. So uh, New Jersey Online Gambling did a poll, 
and this is what they came up with. Those who cheer for the Old English D consume an average of 3.5 drinks per game, which is good. Where do you think that ranks us in Major League Baseball? Mm. Top five. Number eight. Ooh. We're top ten. We're top ten, baby. We did it. We're top ten, baby. Good job, Tigers fans. Uh, the average price that they shell out, $35. That's good for ninth highest. Man, we're not number one. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 we see opening day here. We can be number one. We, we, you know what we got to try harder. This year, we got to try harder. We got to go for the number one spot. We got to be the most drunk fans there is. Bar none. I believe in you. This is my statement. I believe in you. You have Corey's endorsement. Uh, fans of the Central Division rival Chicago White Sox put away an average of 4.2 drinks per game. So they're beating us by .7 drinks. Like, we can't have this. They're leading the way. And then you run down the list. You have the Atlanta Braves with four drinks. You have the Cincinnati Reds with 3.8. Okay, Cincy. Cleveland, 3.8. San Diego, 3.7. You got Colorado coming in at 3.6, the Nationals at 3.6, and then the Orioles and the Tigers. Philly is what surprised me, being way down on the list. Like, when I think Philly, I think belligerent, drunk idiots. Yeah, I mean, especially like at like L.A., you would think that they're out there partying at Dodgers games. So is, is this is specifically beer? Um, it, it just said booziest. So uh, 3.5 drinks. Okay. Drinks. Like, you know how the Tigers have the Tiger Tails, like those huge, yeah. um, what are they, frozen drinks yeah. that you always see chicks walking around with? I, I, I think this is it. I think, I mean, you know what? I have not been to other cities, so I cannot, you know, speak to how much they drink or whatnot, but I think this list is flawed. You think I, why? I, it's rigged. I know how much people in Detroit drink. This list is flawed. So, we, we, we take shots. Right. We, we a lot of shots. Like this is like shot central. Well, and let's be honest. This is Detroit. They're not accounting for the bootleg shit that people sneak in. Like I yeah. used to. Like, like this is paid for drinks. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what? <laughs> then I'll, I'll bow out. Maybe, maybe for paid for drinks. That that might that might be correct. But you're just talking about a drunkenness. No. 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 We 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 were up there. One year I had uh, season tickets to the Tigers. It was in '08. And um, I didn't have great seats. It was all the way in left field, but still it was season tickets. And it got to the point where, oh, my God, like I was going down. If you have season tickets, like full package of season tickets, you are pretty much living at Comerica Park. That's 81 games you got to go to. And I did about 50 of them that year. I made Damn. it to about 50 Damn. of them. That's a lot. I thought you were just dishing them out to friends. No, no, I was going. Like it was a, it was a gift to me. You know, so I got, I got my season tickets. So that was one of my life goals to always do that. It was a gift to me. It was when gas was like five dollars a gallon, so it would cost me more to drive to the ball game. Parking on top of parking, that. and so I started. You know, don't listen, Tigers. But uh, you know, I'd bring in a couple, you know, Jack Daniels little bottles and put them in the bottom of a cooler because you per I don't know if you can still but you used to be able to bring coolers into a Comerica Park as long as it was unopened water and snacks damn yeah so you never had to buy concessions at Comerica you could bring your own wow and you could bring bottled water as long as it was unopened I don't know any other I mean, I didn't go to baseball games to know that, but I don't know any other place that's letting you to do that. That's... You can't even do that at high school games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was the thing. I mean, like, essentially you're going to the park, right? It's a day at the park. So you can pack your lunch, bring a cooler with the kids, and, like, that – that was part of the allure. I, like I said, I'm not sure if you can do it anymore, especially now that they, they hardly let you in with damn purses or, you know, you got to wear clear backpacks to get into uh, Ford Field. But – I used to, you know, take a couple bottles, throw them in the bottom of the cooler, put a bunch of water on top of them, open the cooler, show it, walk right in. And it was next that thing, easy. Next I'm, thing you I'm, know, seventh inning, I'm hammered in left field. So I'm so emotional right now because I didn't know that people outside of me snuck stuff into places. Like, what? You know, like, you know, no, I, I real talk went out with a, 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 on a date and she... Talk trash because you know I didn't want to spend money at the <laughs> at the concession stand. Of course, like, you can't do that on a first date. It wasn't the first date. Oh man! So I, wait. Mean, I don't know. I, I mean, look. Okay, look. Am I gonna go to the store and spend a dollar on some Twizzlers, or am I gonna go to the movies and spend five bucks? 
Hell no, I'm not spending five bucks. I'm doing putting that book See, right that's the thing. My that's jacket. the thing. I used to always be the one that would sneak stuff in, but obviously I'm good friends with the people at Imagine Theaters, and oh. I started realizing. <laughs> I started realizing that I was like, man, they really make no money off of these movies. That's the smallest way that I could support them. But I was like, damn, so I can't bring in no more Little Caesars High and Ready's anymore? <laughs> it's tough. So, oh, wait, I want to go back to Corey's yeah. story here with the date. Where, where was the date? Movie theater? Yeah, movie. And she got mad that you pulled out candy out your pocket? I'm glad you're not with yeah, that girl. She yeah, for you. Oh, it, it was, it, that, that, was, that was the last one. Me. And that, and that, was oh, yeah. off, that was off of me because I'm like... Any other date I've been on, they're like, you ain't stopping by the store? I'm like, what you mean? You're a, you're a freaking... I actually, you know what? From another date, that's where I kind of got it from because, I, you know, I would do it with my, with my friends. We would do it. But, you know, on the date, I didn't want to seem cheap. But, you know, one girl like, yo, why are you... Just pull back out and go to the gas station. We can just go grab something from there. That's just being stupid, spending five bucks for that. You know, we popcorn, yeah. But candy? Hell no. Have you ever used a coupon on a date? Absolutely, my man. Yeah. What? Yes. I mean, I ain't got. I mean, I ain't got no shape in my game. If I could, uh, if I could save a dollar, why not? I mean, I think that's showing that you're financially responsible as a, you know, post trying to act like you got it and you don't. That's I never, I never understood that. For me, my rule was always never on the first date. Only on the first date, I wouldn't go to a place that I had a coupon or I had even gift cards. But after that first date, psh, I'm pulling out anything and everything because. I mean, with what we do, it's like a lot of people obviously will do things for them, and then they'll reward us with a gift card. I'm not letting those gift cards go to waste. No, I have a whole stack of gift cards. Like It's just thousands of dollars that I'll never use. I don't know why. They're at home, and every time I'm like, oh, I got a gift card for that. Oh, it's at home. Never mind. Real, true story. I was going about to go on a date to um, Inyo on the sushi lounge oh, yeah. on, on Ferndale. Yep. And I told her, like, hey, we're going to go ahead and go to Inyo. She's like, oh, cool. About 15 minutes later, hey. Go on Groupon. They got a Groupon. You, oh, you can, you can, you can, you can um, do this, and we, you know, we spend this, and we can get X, Y, and Z amount of drinks and stuff like that. I'm like, this my girl. Did you just wipe her up in the in the moment? <laughs> for, for for that for that stretch of time, yeah. Because I was just like, that was impressive. Like, hey, go on Groupon and go buy this right now. You're gonna spend up spending this. Where without without it, with this, we can at least get this this and this. I'm like, oh, Joey, what have you snuck into a place? Uh, because I know you don't drink. Yeah, so you don't not, drink. So yeah. I'm not doing anything that, like, if I were to get caught, it's like, all right, you're not coming in. But for me, it was always just food. Yeah, just food and drinks. What's the most random pizza, food? Pizza, Little Caesars, a whole box. You snuck up a whole box of Little Caesars. Oh, Where? Yeah. That's talent. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I did it sideways though. So the whole, all the slices, it, it didn't like. So what I did was I put napkins over the pizza, so it wouldn't fully smush each other on top of each other. But it kind of held it in place, and then I just put it in my poofy jacket. No problem. No problem. Busted that thing, put it on the floor. It was great. Yeah, I've seen girls that, like, host nightclubs and stuff. I've seen girls, like, sneak sandwiches into the club. Like sandwiches. In the, yeah, <laughs> some sandwiches. Sandwiches? No, in the middle of the damn club night, you look over, and there's a chick just like... He's like, where did you get a sandwich from in electricity? Like, nobody, nobody, nobody serves sandwiches here. Yeah. This chick just eating sandwiches at electricity. Honestly, you can't knock her for that. No, I was impressed. I wasn't even mad. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've seen so many random people sneak stuff in. And, you know, alcohol is probably the biggest thing. Like on Halloween parties, uh, I had a friend, you know, those camel backpacks where oh, you yeah. fill them up with water. Oh, the camel bags. He, yeah, he was, um, he was the dude from Halo. The dude from Halo, the character from Halo. Anybody play Halo? Yeah, yeah. Okay, he was the character from Halo. And part of that costume, he had a camel pack filled with vodka. And it looked like part of his costume, but dude didn't have to pay for a drink all night long. It was, you know, Halloween, and he was lit. Sound like a smart man to me. I don't know if I would have used vodka, though, because uh, me and vodka do not have, um, we haven't had a good friendship. It looks like water, though, so that's, that's why it's easy to conceal. Yeah. Like I, I, ain't nobody believing that. No, I've seen people take water bottles, empty them out, pour vodka in there, and then use like super glue to redo the lid so it cracks when you open it, so they could prove. Like people get tricky when they're sneaking alcohol. You, can you can't redo the pop on a. Yeah, you can. Really? Yeah, you just put a little bit of super glue around it, so it sounds like. Oh, no, that's I'm, awesome! I'm, I'm not buying that. Nope. We'll do it. I'll show you today, fish. I can see it. I I I can I I had to I had to visualize it for a minute. I'm like, yeah, the little 
Right. And yep. that's all yeah. you need. You're like, you're not looking for, you know, like, it's not like you're breaking a safety seal or anything. Right. Like, you just, just got to make sure you got them ridges lined up yep. just the right. Let it sit for a second. Yeah, that and, could not And it looks like it's intact and yeah. everybody thinks it's just a water bottle. So... There's a fun tip if you're going to any games this year. Uh, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we got Joey's news. Plus, uh, do a little Andre Drummond talk. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yeah, Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond. We're going to talk about them coming up next on the Woodward Sports Network. Hey, it's Joey from Woodward Sports, and I am here in downtown Fan at Bridge Street Exchange. This place has so many amazing things for guys. And, ladies, this is the hidden spot that you got to come check out. I'm talking thorough good boots, best boots ever. They have barware, they got the Stormy Cromer hats, they got Carhartt hats, a huge Carhartt selection, they even got Snoop Dogg underwear. So go check them out, BridgeStreetExchange.com, and use the code word WSN for 15% off. I love when you say, and Snoop Dogg underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most random thing, I'm like looking around and all of a sudden he's like, yeah, we got Snoop Dogg underwear. I was like, what? And it's the Doggy Style, too. It's from the Doggy Style yeah. album. So that was a great cover and just a great comic book altogether. Uh, we got a big thing going on. It's called the Perfect Bracket Payoff, brought to you by Hall Financial. We're giving you a chance to get $500,000, and you could use it to pay off your mortgage. You could do pretty much whatever you want with it. But Hall Financial is giving you this opportunity, and you could pre-register right now. Go to woodwardsports.com. Click on the Bracket Challenge. It's right there as soon as you go to our website. Pre-register so as soon as Selection Sunday happens, they will send you the bracket. You fill it out. You get a perfect one. You're getting $500,000. But we know perfect is hard right like you know bill gates does his billion dollar or whatever um so we understand that not everybody's going to get a perfect bracket so we're giving you other options too you're, you're just going to compete against everybody that's filling out a bracket first place is going to get a ps5 and a 65 inch tv uh we got a shinola watch for second place free pizza for a year and then we got a 250 dollar top golf gift card uh courtesy of grow green as well and last place, because we don't want to forget about last place, if you're dead last, you get a free toilet. Truthfully. And that's courtesy of Woodward Sports. And you heard Adam yesterday say that he's going to go through picking all 16 seeds just because he wants this toilet. It's not a bad price. No, it's a $150 toilet. It's real nice if you need one. I, I, wanna, I just want to be the person that at least gets the photo of somebody getting this toilet delivered to them. Oh, we're delivering it. All these prizes are also hand-delivered by somebody here at the Woodward Sports I Network. I can't wait to see this. So, Joyke may show up at your house. Darren McCarty may show up at your house. Fish may show up at your house. Art may show up. I may show up at your house. Because um, we got to deliver all the pizzas for the watch parties. Like, there's there's a lot going on with this, but we want to get you guys registered. So make sure you go to woodwardsports.com, click on the bracket link right now, and uh, get the email notification so you know when to fill out your bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey says, I'll even come install it for free. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got the plug. <laughs> yeah, we got installers by the dozen. No, Jeffrey Vallis, what a great human being. He won $100 from us when we first kicked off the network, came in here, donated it back for charity. So we know Jeffrey is a great human being and appreciate him and everything that he does but make sure you get it on this perfect bracket uh you could fill out multiple of them let your friends know because I, I really want to see somebody win five hundred thousand dollars it would be so amazing and every single year that i fill out my bracket i'm always like oh this is the one this is the one and and this is the year that i've really been most in touch with college basketball that I'm most excited to fill this out, and I can't believe we're just a couple of days away from doing it. Yeah, Selection Sunday is coming soon. Uh, but right now, let's get into Joey's News. So we start this one off talking about Detroit Lions, and it is going to be a big day because Kenny Galladay, the Lions got to lock him in with the franchise tag by 5 p.m. today. Um, this could be pushed back possibly because they have yet to announce the salary cap deadline. But per Adam Schefter, he talked about how Kenny Galladay turned down a long-term uh, contract extension in 2020 last year that would have paid him between $18 million to $19 million per season. Can you imagine just being like, nah, I'm good. Nah, I don't need that $19, $18 million. Like, I'm good. Truthfully, now I'm like really curious to see if he ends up doing this franchise tag or not with the Lions. And if he doesn't, how much he's going to actually end up getting because he only played a few games last year. He was 
a lot of injuries, so it's like that. That's that's going to be interesting. Interesting to see if he's going to get more for another team, or he just turned down the eighteen, nineteen million to return to Detroit. Because what if he goes somewhere else and takes takes less just to get out of here? That that's would be so dumb. Then I will officially hate Kenny Galladay. <laughs> For real, if he pimps us like that and goes someplace else for like fifteen million, he will be number one number on my list. list of most hated former Detroit athletes. Like I loved Ben Wallace back in the day. He broke my fucking heart when he went to Chicago for just a couple more million dollars. Like he broke up a dynasty for a couple more million dollars. And I love Ben Wallace. Ben if you're watching, I love that what you're doing with Grand Rapids Drive and all that stuff. But you ripped apart the Pistons for a couple more million dollars because you didn't like Flip Saunders. Like, if Kenny Galladay does this, I get you didn't like Matt Patricia. But how dare you pimp the Lions like that? What, what would be the number that would make him your number, your, your most hit? Anything because, under what we offered him. Anything under that 18? I, I would say, I would say, like, business move if it was a, 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 a million plus. If it was over one million, so if it was like sixteen or so, I'll be okay with it. But you gotta realize well, so the franchise tag is sixteen point five. So I'm so you saying like if he if he did like the seventeen, eighteen, you'll be okay if he went to another team? I mean, listen, if you're getting more money, yeah, of course that's a that's a business decision. But I mean, you look at how he turned down eighteen to nineteen million dollars per season in that last offer last season. The dude's only made not even five million dollars in his career. Keep in mind, last year had that injury, so it's like this guy to me is not seeming like the biggest, the smartest of the athletes because dude's looking like an idiot right now if he doesn't end up taking this. Yeah, because you didn't play, you didn't, you only played five games last year and you were about to get Michael Thomas money. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know what more. I don't, I don't know what more you can ask for. I, I, well, I'm kind of with stick. If he goes to another team and he gets something like 17 million. I'm going to be like, really? Really? I, I'm going to hate him. I'm actually going to hate him. You have and to. I don't even know the dude, but I'm going to hate him. <laughs> you have to because then you're going to start to realize, like, all right, we knew, we know that he was healthy last season, sat these games out just because he didn't like being here. Other news in the NFL, the Lions released linebacker Christian Jones yesterday and then the biggest in the NFL yesterday. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys reached a four-year, $160 million deal. $75 million guaranteed in year one. Jesus. I wonder did he put on that, um, that 50 cent. I'm going straight to the bank with this. <laughs> I mean, he can put on whatever he wants. $75 million for one year. That's what blows my mind about this whole contract. That and he was able to put in there no franchise tags afterwards. Dude's like, that's, that's the best no deal in history. Cross. Yeah, no trade clause I've heard about. No franchise tag? Never heard Man, that before. This. Yeah, he got and he got both. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder if Jerry Jones is pissed that they didn't sign him last year. Oh, yeah, because he got more out of this deal. Yeah. No, he did. Oh, he could have <laughs> got him last year for way, way less. I mean, he wanted he wanted the Mahomes deal last year, but I, I think eventually cooler heads would have prevailed, and you probably could have got him for about 30, 35. And now he, you're at minimum 40 a year. 75 guaranteed the first year. Yeah, he got to break off Canelo Dalton some of that money. And yes, I know his name is Andy Dalton. Canelo people. Dalton. <laughs> you got Rocket, baby. <laughs> you honestly can't knock him on this one, though. He did it. He played this so perfectly. To get what he wanted out yeah, of this deal. All you had to do was snap your ankle, take a season off, let the Cowboys see that they don't have shit for a quarterback, and next thing you know, you get $126 million guaranteed. Ah, charmed life, man. Hey. <laughs> bravo, man, bravo. You, you, I don't want to say you got lucky, but you played, your, you and your agent played, the, played your hand correctly, and more power to you. It's crazy because you thought after that injury, you're like, oh, Ooh, dude, he just messed I, up everything. Like, now, dude's, dude's going to get thought. $20 million this year. Like, that was my thought because I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to backtrack. I wouldn't, when Dak didn't sign that deal, I'm like, you idiot. Right. You could have had a deal in place. You messed up your ankle. Now you're not going to get nothing. And he messed up his ankle and got more. He's laughing at you right now, taking a shit, wiping his ass with hundred dollars, thousand dollar bills. I don't even think those exist. Three days after being placed on administrative leave, Kansas and Les Miles have mutually agreed to part ways, effective immediately. And this story just sickens all of us. We talked about it earlier. I have one problem with this. Why does it have to be mutually agreed? Why can't it just be kicked them we out? We fired them. Right. right. We fired them after what we found out. 
mutually agree sounds so cheap. It saves face for the person who was in the wrong. Yeah, it I, protects I just, them. I, I don't get yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I hate when they. I hate when a guy does something wrong, regardless of the situation. They always go mutually agree. What? What? What is their wisdom? The mutual agreement is that hey, we fired them. There was nothing mutual about that. We don't want that kind of person in our organization. What you got, fish? I'm assuming they went up to Les Miles and said, "Hey, you kind of messed up. You want to leave? Yeah, I'll leave. <laughs> All right, good. Mutually." Mutually agreed. But fish, yeah. they, but, gotta, but, they gotta boot but, you but, but, out of why, something like but, that. But yeah, but why would you want that guy there? Why does it have to be mutual? It can just be like, look, we didn't know this when we hired you. Now that we found this out, you do not. There's got to be a character clause somewhere in this contract. You can, you are not fit to represent our university, so we're going to let you go. I got to say this. If anybody ever did this stuff here at Woodward Sports... We would fire them immediately and not say, are you good with being fired too? Yeah. Like, that's that's what mutually agreeing to being fired is. It's like, no, man, you made a mistake. Get the hell out of here. We don't have time for this stuff. Not, hey, Corey, um, I know you molested that girl, but um, sorry. Uh, you okay with being let go? I, like, I, I, you don't I have that I, conversation. Yeah, I, I think I'm okay with losing my job. No, <laughs> mutually agreed is when, you know what, hey, we're seeing that the the partnership for business reasons is not walking is not working out. So we're gonna mutually let you out of your contract so you can go do your thing and we can go move in another direction. Not because you did some BS that we, we didn't yeah skittles. sexually assault somebody that we had no idea about. What, what, that that's that is so cheap. I think it's cowardice, and I also think that there should. The University of um, Kansas and LSU, they need to be investigated for how long they knew this and let that ride because Les Miles, he he got the he got to save face on his way out just off of how they announced it. Those those people were in charge, they need to be held accountable for that. Yep. So get the hell on, never come back. Goodbye, Les Miles. He gone. He gone. Uh, hopefully another team is gone, and I'm talking about number one Cleveland State because Oakland University yesterday beat Northern Kentucky, and tonight if they beat number one Cleveland State, they are advancing to the tourney. To the tourney. Dude, you have to go if they make it to the tourney. Oh, I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I have to. I mean, we talk about how they're playing number one Cleveland State tonight. They only lost to them by two last month on February 6th. So this is definitely a possibility. And you see them there celebrating in the locker room yesterday. Hopefully we see it again tonight. <laughs> I'm laughing at Corey in the chat right now. What do you say? Uh, someone just said, why did it got to be Corey when I said about molesting? And I just said, hey, ask Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's like, see how they do me? Uh, uh, we love messing with you, Corey. And obviously, anybody listening right now, I was joking. Corey has never molested somebody that I know of. Um, right, Corey? I have done nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. Cancel stick. No, don't cancel. Why are you canceling me, Fish? I'm not the one out here molesting people. We canceling him, Fish? Uh, <laughs> no, but people do that. Yes, people do do that. That is for sure. Welcome to 2021. Note, guys, on that note, I like to talk about my people at Bridge Street Exchange because... <laughs> The, honestly, they are some of the best people there. You left, you failed. Okay, you, that was, okay. I'm like, how is he gonna transition this? We're you talking left about me in the air. <laughs> on it. You left me hanging. You're gonna bring that back up. Leave it in the damn Facebook comments, all right? <laughs> but we gotta talk about Bridge Street Exchange. My boy Kevin over there, such an amazing dude. And honestly, I love shopping at Bridge Street Exchange in downtown Fenton. And yeah, it might be a little bit dry from you, but I'm telling you, you gotta go check this place out. It's not like a mall. It's a beautiful store. You're supporting a locally owned business. All the Carhartt gear, the thorough good boots that they have. It's just such a great Michigan store because there's so many Michigan products in there. And if you check out BridgeStreetExchange.com, use the code word WSN to get 15% off your entire order right now. Uh, yeah, and we also got to thank them for giving us the Shinola watch that we're giving away during our perfect bracket payoff. Um, we talked about it a little bit earlier. It's up now. Make sure you go to WoodwardSports.com, pre-register for your perfect bracket so you can get that $500,000 or the Shinola watch, uh, thanks to Bridge Street. So we appreciate them for all that they do. Um, we only got a couple more minutes before Fish's Facts, but I wanted to touch on these two topics. One, it's official now with Blake Griffin. He has signed with the Nets. 
Uh, yesterday it was just a rumor or where he was supposed to be going, but it's official now. He's going to wear number two, and he's going to be their backup center when they're playing against smaller people. So Blake Griffin's going to get like three minutes a game. Yeah, especially if you listen to the hook with Darren McCarty, Pilar Lastra, and Maz. They do a deal or no deal segment. And yesterday they were talking about deal or no deal. Is Blake Griffin going to be the one to seal the East for the Nets? No. And I was like, no chance. No, I mean, that, that's James Harden that we're speaking of. Once Harden went there, that's when they became a contender. I, all right, look. Blake Griffin on the Nets does not move the needle for them at all. He, he, he adds nothing. He doesn't bring anything on offense. They already have enough on offense. They have Kyrie Irving. They have James Harden. They have um, Kevin Durant. You don't need any more offense. What they needed was somebody who can clean the glass, who's a rim protector, and who can um, just clog up that clog up that lane, you know, and, and you know, for, for the you know, team trying to get to the rack. Blake Griffin's not going to do that. He doesn't bring anything to them. I mean, if you put them all on the court, I mean, technically, you can't. You really can't double anybody with with KD, Kyrie, and James. Like Blake's gonna just be there to collect a a nice ring, um, pop potentially, but he doesn't move the needle for them. They they, they move the needle when they got James Harden. Right. To me, James Harden was the big piece of that puzzle. Um, but another big man that used to play in Detroit that is rumored to be on the move. If the Cleveland Cavaliers buy out Andre Drummond, looks like he may go to the Lakers. That is who I thought that the Oof. Nets were waiting on was the um, Andre Drummond buyout because for the Lakers or the Nets, regardless of what people think of Andre Drummond in Detroit, he will be a great addition for both teams. For the Nets, he would have been exactly what they needed. You put Andre Drummond on that Nets team, I'm sorry, I would have gave them ship. a ship. ship. Easy. Because now they have one guy who can – be effective for their team without scoring the basketball. You put him on the Lakers, him and Anthony Davis near the rim, and you gotta go. You gotta try to go to the rack against that. Well, that's exactly what he is in my eyes. He's a poor man's Anthony Davis. <laughs> like that's what Andre Drummond is. So you know, you start Anthony Davis, you bring Andre off the bench, and you rest Anthony Davis with Andre, and you're not gonna get the same production because Andre can't dribble and can't shoot like Anthony Davis, but he can sure be big like Anthony Davis. You have, I'm, I'm saying, you got Anthony Davis starting. Move, um, um, no, you got, you got Andre starting. Move Anthony Davis right back down to power four. Brown at Brown at the three. <sighs> That's 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 nasty. That's that's bad. That's bad business for the league. Yeah. Um, so that is the favorite for Andre Drummond if he gets bought out of Cleveland. We're going to follow that story and see where Andre Drummond comes out. I do know that he wants to be in L.A. because when he was here in Detroit, all he wanted to be was an entertainer and a celebrity, not really a basketball player. So you put him in L.A., Oof, his attention's going to be all over the map. <laughs> all over the map. One, one step close to that rap album coming out. That's right. Drum and drum and drum and always up to something. Uh, <laughs> we got to take a quick break. When we come back, my man Fish is here with Fish's Facts. We'll do it next on the Woodward Sports Network. Hey, Joey, are the cookies ready? Uh-huh. Joey. Mm. Why is one missing? I don't know. I don't want the floor. Joey, open your mouth. Dang it, I got busted, but that was so worth it. I'm here at Crumble Cookies off of Rochester Road, right by the Imagine Theaters, and I'll tell you, these are the best cookies I've ever had in my entire life. I am not exaggerating, so come try them out. Free cookie day this Friday. Free cookie day this Friday at Crumble Cookie. Joey's going to be out there, and maybe this time he'll bring me back some. If you come, maybe I'll give you. I, I might give you one for free. Oh wait, actually, they're giving them for everybody. Yeah, you gave the interns for free, but you didn't give me one. That's everybody right. gets free cookies, even right, stick. Joey. If you come this Friday, <laughs> and where's it at? Right off of Rochester Road by the Imagine Theaters. There. Oh, beautiful. Okay, uh, so we have fish up here. It is now nine fifty. It is time for fish's facts. Fish, what kind of facts you got for us today? All uh, right, we talked about it two weeks ago, and it finally happened. Tennis. Uh, Djokovic broke the record for most uh, weeks at number one. Nice. How many weeks is that? Fish? 311. Damn. Previous so, record was 310. Years. And now he finally beat it. 
Can you imagine being a good tennis player in the past six years and just having no shot of ever being number one? Like, ever. You're just like, I'm really good at tennis. They're like, no, you're not. You're not number one. That's crazy. That's a that's six years. be the biggest ever. Yeah, that's, that, yes, it is the biggest. In, like, sports? Uh, well, I mean, it kind of only relates to tennis and golf. Right. Those are the two only sports it relates to. All right, what's your next fish? All right, moving to uh, soccer, where uh, yesterday an Australian person got the uh, fastest goal as a uh, first ever start. How, Very that, confusing. But yeah. Told well, his career the first start? Yes, this is his first start, and he came out as a substitute, and he scored in 25 seconds. Oh, good God. That's awesome. Um, he scored, I think, in like three or four touches of the ball. That's awesome. Yeah, because soccer, it's hard to score. So Matthew Hatch, congratulations to him for scoring as a debutante, meaning first start, and he scored. All right. And then we have... Kevin Love, on this day in history, March 9th, 2011, he uh, recorded his 52nd consecutive double-double, breaking Moses Malone's post-NBA-ABA merger record. Man, I feel bad for Kevin Love. Like, he sacrificed his career to go play with LeBron in Cleveland. LeBron gave him, like, one year, then bailed on his ass. Then Kevin Love decided to stay in Cleveland, and now he's in Cleveland. <laughs> like, and I just feel bad for anybody that lives in Cleveland. Well, I like Cleveland. You do? Have you ever been? I have been. I have family in Cleveland. Oh, okay. Well, I like your family. I just don't like Cleveland. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we, go, <laughs> we, we go to Beth's now. Uh, we have Champions League is back today. What is? I knew you needed that. You got to do it, the Fish. Champions. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Uh, It's back today. We have two games, 3 o'clock. We have uh, Sevilla and Dortmund, and then we have Porto and Juventus. Nice. Uh, so they do two legs. They do two matches. So from the first result, Porto actually leads 2-1. to one. Uh, So Juve will need to go past that. And then Dortmund leads 3-2. to two. All So right. basically, if Sevilla scores... No, Dortmund was like... So Sevilla has to score more than three away goals. And then they just go... Anyway. Awesome. Well, let's get into your bets, man. What do you got for bets today? Those, those are the bets. Oh, those are the bets? Okay, good. Uh, and the total is, so uh, Sevilla is plus 206. Okay. Uh, draw is plus 249. Porto is plus 556. Five, awesome. Yeah, 66. Uh, that is to, I think, just to win the game. So you can bet just for them to win the game, but they go by the aggregate scoring. Awesome. You can also bet that way, too. Awesome. And if you want to bet, make sure you go to mybookie.com and take advantage so of the Fish's bets. It sounded confusing because they can lose the game but still go on to the round of eight. Yeah, that that based is one on weird the, thing I don't love about soccer. Is sometimes and hockey too. Based sometimes. on the total score of the right. teams. Okay, you either win the game or you lose the damn game. Right, you're either in or you're out. You can't you can't advance by <laughs> losing. I just don't understand that in some sports, but it happens. All right, thank you, Fish, for your facts. It is now time for Joey's dumbass of the day. Guys, persistence is key. <laughs> That's something I want you to take away from this story. Can we put up the picture of what he looks like? Because this honestly is just the best part of it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy right here, first off, Florida man. Heck 21 yeah. 21-year-old naked guy in Fort Myers knocked on a woman's door the other day. And she asked if he needed some help. He politely said, no, thank you. And then he left. Then she looks outside of her window to see this man jumping on her kid's trampoline <laughs> butt-ass oh, naked. Oh, my God. So was he naked on the initial knock? Yes. Okay. And she still was so polite and said, uh, can I help you? Do you need any help? <laughs> it's like, I don't understand how you can do this. Obviously, the guy must have been on something, but he later on ended up smashing into the window after the woman wouldn't let him in a second time. So it was either he was trying to get some drugs or he was trying to smash. It was one or the other. I mean, probably both. Why not? Get some drugs, then smash. Or he maybe just wanted to jump off the trampoline. You ever jumped <laughs> on a trampoline naked? I'm sure it's very freeing that you're flopping around, you know? like Especially in Florida, you get a nice little breeze at nighttime. Right. You, you know who I thought was going to be your dumbass of the day? Who? Joe Sh John Schnatter, the founder of Papa John's. What it was? He, isn't he done? He's not the founder anymore. Well, he, 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 oh, he stepped down. He stepped down. He's still the founder. But, um, yeah, he's always the founder. Yeah, but. You heard what he said the other day? No. You know what did he say? He's been working hard the past 20 months to get the N-word out of his vocabulary. 
Oh, well, that's good for him. Isn't that isn't that why he got fired, like, on a conference call or something? <laughs> that's right. So he's working on it 20 months later. How hard do you have to... <laughs> two years? <laughs> two years to stop saying something? <laughs> two years? Especially, like, something that's a racial slur on top of that, like... If you get fired for something like this and lose your entire career, you would think that this would be an easy little... How much done. of a part of your vocabulary was it? Like, are you Lil Wayne? Like, what is going on? Just trying to I get out of my vocabulary. Fucking, I'm like, man, it's... <laughs> Boy, this is just some work I got to do over here, man. This is impossible, the guys. Like, is he thinks this. he's being noble. Like, he's like, you know what? I've put in the work. I've done my due diligence, and I no longer say the end. It took me 20 months, but I finally made it, guys. Here is here is here's what he said. We've had three goals for the last twenty months to get rid of the <laughs> to get rid of the N word in my vocabulary and dictionary and everything else because it's just not true. Figure out how they did this and get on with my What's life. What's the other two goals, damn it? Yeah, what are them? Like to <laughs> quit killing children and quit kicking cats? Like what the hell are his other goals? <laughs> At least he sets achievable goals. It's like my man's like, hey, you guys got to praise me on this because, you know, like, giving up smoking is really hard. It, it, it could take 20 months, I'm sure. But stop saying the N-word. <laughs> Pretty sure it doesn't take 20 months unless you, the dude was using it all day long. I do <laughs> this, is, this is what makes me just hate white people. <laughs> Like, like I'm white. I understand this, but it's like, guys, it's really not this. Like, it, it's not hard. None of this is hard. You don't molest women. You don't talk down to them. You don't say the N word. Like, it's none of this is hard. Why is this so? Why do we have to bring this up on this show so much? Why? I'm honestly offended of you saying this right now because he's been working on this. All right. <laughs> Like, what more do you want? He's been working hard at this for 20 months, and you're going to sit here and truthfully be so disrespectful towards this man? You should be ashamed of yourself. Man, that's it. I'm ordering Papa John's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> Uh, what do you got, Fish? Well, I, I think the main key is he's trying to get out of his vocabulary. Yeah, that is the main key, but it's also the main key that it shouldn't even be fucking in his vocabulary. Well, I think that's the funniest thing. He's trying to get out of his vocabulary. Yeah, and that it's taking him so long to do so. so. But he's working on it. He's, we're getting there. He's working on it. Uh, thank you guys so much for waking up with the Morning Woodward Show every morning right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Up next at 11, we got the Belizean and Bell Show, which is going to be great today. Joyke Bell has a cool thing going on on Wednesday. I hope he talks about during his show today. Plus, we got The Hook coming up today from oh, yeah. 3 to 5 p.m. with our own Darren McCarty, Pilar, Maz, and of course, the world-famous Art. And um, thank you guys so much for being a part of Woodward Sports, for sharing, for liking, and just spreading the word about us. We will be back on tomorrow morning. Coney review tomorrow, Joey. I can't wait to eat some Coney's, but before the Coney's, you guys want to join me today? I forgot to let you guys know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't tell you guys? No. Man, come on. We're going to jump naked on the trampoline and then Papa John's today. <laughs> yeah, Say no you, more, you, fam. You, you, you can have that one. <laughs> All right. I'll see you there, Joey. <laughs> have a great morning, everybody.